Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kayfabe. If you are familiar with Kayfabe from my channel, we are completely revising it and we're expanding it. You've seen with myself, you've seen it with Cleo Thomas. It is just going to get a lot bigger moving forward. We have an entire team of folks that we're going to always have coming in and out here for Kayfabe, talking all the latest in wrestling, but it's wrestling for us, by us. So we are going to be giving the real and everything going on here in the wrestling industry from AEW to WWE to New Japan, the whole enchilada, as well coming up with things from our mindset, stuff that we really want to know from fantasy bookings for fantasy previews and everything. And so I wanted to make sure that I have one of the top, top folks in wrestling fandom that I have run across right now. I'm telling y'all, we I, I put to you like this, before we even started, we just spent the last 15 minutes talking about wrestling that we should have recorded. Yeah. We should have <laughs> yeah, recorded that too. We should have recorded it, but that's just how much of a fan we are, man. I'm also there's just as much of a fan. I'm also a fan of his work. He is a Texas native, a Houston native, and I'm very proud and honored to have him as my co-host and partner for this, Mr. Chenna Do. What man, it do? Thanks for having me, man. Thank you for having me. Now we appreciate that you for having me. Now, Mr. Faro. <laughs> now, we, you know. <laughs> You know, he bring me, they be like, brr, brr, brr. like yep. in Nigeria, we do right, it's like a fake laser sound effect. Welcome to the show, Mr. Chino. Do I'm happy to be here now to talk wrestling? All the grabs we are here every week now <laughs> together. We Just because you now. did that, we now need the uh, we need a segment like uh, with the shoe for someone who done done something dumb, they need the shoe thrown at them. We it's need cool. that, yeah. right yep, we I, need that. We're gonna start adding it into this every week. <laughs> <laughs> Who getting the shoe thrown at him this week? Yes, that is coming. So y'all keep out for that. Bow. Oh my goodness. All right, so we want to go ahead. We, uh, as y'all can see on the screen, we got a lot of stuff to talk about in wrestling. Um, first thing we're going to get on to is we're going to the WWE and we're going to the Raw. Uh, this past Monday night's uh, Raw taping came out. Um Shannon, do you 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 said something about Raw, and um, I think you should just go ahead and say it. we've been talking about it lately. Just uh, how, how do you feel about Monday Night Raw right now, currently? Uh, let me say this first too, because right, because this 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 is my first time on kayfabe. I want to let everybody know I've I've been a fan of wrestling since '98. Let's rewind Listen. back there. Let's let yeah. let's start there. You know what? That's what we'll do. This is the first episode. Thank you yeah. so much. Let's let's start there. 98. Great year of wrestling. Great year of wrestling. Great year. What brought you in? I was a poor kid out in the H. I did not have cable. And there was a, a channel out here called Channel 51. There was a show they used to play called Shotgun Saturday Night, where they show the highlights of Raw. This is before SmackDown even existed, too. They showed show the highlights of Raw. And it's when Raw was two hours. And I yep. remember the first time I saw a tag match. It was uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Mankind versus The Rock and The Big Show. And I saw that and the entire sequence of everything, I was hooked. It's like, who are these people? And I, cause I, cause I knew who, I was aware of wrestling, but I, I wasn't into Hulk Hogan. I wasn't into the Macho Man. I wasn't into uh, Bret Hart. I wasn't into, I knew who they were, but I wasn't into it at all. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't watch it, but this era pulled me in. And from that point, Undertaker, Kane, DX, um, you had um, Ken Shamrock, Chris Jericho, you had Edge and Christian, the Hardys, the Dudleys. I mean, all these just amazing cast of characters. The 2001 Royal Rumble is probably the greatest Royal Rumble. <sighs> like the most star-studded, loaded Royal Rumble. Because you felt like anyone on that roster, that lineup could have won that year. Yeah. And that's rare. Yeah. And I'm saying that's just, a, that's just the era that we were in. Like that. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I too myself am around that time. Like you said, man, I um I knew of these other folks, but you know, you knew them as by that time legends. Like Hulk Hogan, I didn't I, I known him for I knew he was a wrestler, but I knew him for like movies. I knew him for Yeah, you know, movies. Yeah, like my like Macho Man was the Slim Jim guy. Snap it to the Slim yeah. Jim. Like that was yeah, him yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that was that guy. And then it was like I knew Ric Flair because it was like 16 time world heavyweight champion, but it was just like, for me, I just thought that was like all over. I didn't, I didn't know 
everything about wrestling like that. And so the way I got into it, I was in the third grade and like my friends were like talking about it. And so, um, I, again, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't have cable and stuff like that. Like literally, yeah. you know, I got to wear glasses now cause I would try when pay-per-views came on, it would always come on channel one, but it'd be like the little fuzzy messed up thing. Grumbled so up you'd be like trying that, to man. just look inside that one little part yes. of the screen where you can <laughs> see and I'm like, Stone Cold just hit somebody with a chair. Oh shit. Oh, he go win the title. Like just squinting my ass off. And so before okay, that, I, but you like this now, you know what I'm saying? Yep, when well, you just thing. sitting there, just <laughs> be like, let's go, right? Let's go. And then so you, I, uh, but before that, I, my friends would come in talking about it on Tuesdays and just like, yo, bro, I'm telling you, man, they gonna make Stone Cold ain't never gonna lose his championship. And I'm just sitting there like, who are y'all talking about? And they was like, you don't watch wrestling? And I was like, no. And then so I went and watched. And like you said, you just see all of these characters coming out and just walking down the ramp and stuff. But just what really got me was when that glass shattered and you hear from Victoria, Texas. I'm like, oh, Yo. what? And, and you see Stone yeah. Cold walk out, middle fingers everywhere, stunner yeah. to his boss, just not his caring. Boss. Like you said, uh, when we discussed before, drinking beer, chugging those back. It was like, it was a spectacle. And then you yeah. see someone like The Rock who looked just like us running the game. Even when he became corporate rock, you were just like, man, I ain't born, I don't care. Okay, yeah. man, get your championship. They ain't gonna give it yeah. to you nowhere else. Yeah, and then like in that whole era, and like in those crowds, yeah, like those oh, kind God. of crowds, signs yeah. everywhere. The everywhere. energy they're going crazy. It's not the same like that. I mean, even you before Thunderdome. Yeah. You wanna why? know why? Because people ain't drunk. That's why. It ain't number <laughs> kids in there now. So you ain't got all these drunk ass older people. Just yeah. That's the audience I wanted to be a part of. I Man. wanted that one. I wanted the one where the women were were flashing each other, were flashing on screen when they didn't show you that on camera. I'm like, that why that's why that crowd is so epic. Yes, that was that was the era of what we call Smash Mouth Wrestling. Yes. That was when it was really like rock star lifestyle, more or less. Yes, it was. The people, I mean, I, I remember it was everything was red hot at that time. Like everything they touched turned to gold. Yes. And it's like now. And again, like I said, I'm a fan since 98, but the raw product now, which brings us to today, mm -hmm. now, when I tell you it is a hard watch to watch raw every week, this three hour show, yeah. it is such a tough watch. It like is. this past week, they opened up raw. I was so into the segment of Kofi Kingston talk, telling Drew McIntyre pretty much get his buddy in the line because honestly, I'm tired of seeing Drew in the title picture now. They yeah. booked him incorrectly. They didn't book him right as a baby face. Now he comes off like a whiny kind of heel who wants shot after shot after shot. But then like they had this good match and then of course it being raw ends in a DQ, yeah. which means the first 40 minutes of this show meant nothing. So I watched this whole, this whole match for no reason. And they're gonna have a rematch next week. And, and, and like you said, bro, it's, it's, they booked it very wrong because yeah. it's, one, why why do y'all keep doing coffee like that? Like, that's what I want to start off with. Why is it he's miraculously thrown like a dart into the title picture? You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yo, I beat this person. Give me the momentum. I'm like, so last time I checked, a lot of these folks come in with this OG status and immediately get put in the title picture. Why does he keep accidentally getting put into it? Goldberg yes. can walk his ass in here anytime and any time title off of anyone. Coffee been here yep. over 10 years putting in work. And I can really say probably more than half of his career has had a title around him. You mean yep. to tell me he has to keep kind of, it has to seem like, oh, we got to wait for the crowd to get behind it for you to see about getting another thing. Or as they want to keep quoting it, coffee mania, which to me sounds yep. more like affirmative action. I, I can I can definitely feel you on that because at this point in Kofi's career, he's wildly over. He's done everything in that company. Why does it always have to be he just hops into it or he's just happy to be here or hey, I've held my tongue long enough? Like why he shouldn't have got fed to Brock, first of all. I don't want to take it back there. That look just real quick. Back. Like, how is it <clears> like into into me, it's like you you premiere on Fox. 
This is a big deal. You could have at least let him go six minutes. Let him go six minutes. Let him get some kind of offense in. Like the match that Brock Lesnar had with Daniel Bryan, he could have very well had a, a match just similar to that with Kobe Kingston. Like it could have gone a really good distance. Let, sure, I, I Brock winning, I get it. I really do. You're on Fox now. Brock is, I know, I, I get that part, okay? And he had a six-month run. You know, you can't be champion forever. I get that. Mm-hmm. It's just the manner in which it's nine, six seconds, but see, one here's, F5. Here's the thing I think about, though, Chandler Duke, is from a money standpoint and a storytelling standpoint. Think about who Brock has built. Brock has, before Brock, you know, Brock, but many people try to, you know, you know, have, have their opinions about Brock. But we now have seen the product of who Brock has made to stay here and be these pillars. Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. All of them catapulted into us now believing that that they can carry this brand without you having to bring back Undertaker all the time, John Cena and the rest of these folks. Now how you write them is the thing it is is the case now i see they're they're perfecting roman reigns we're going to get into that a little bit later they are doing they're they're getting there with seth rollins it's just him trying to fill out really what's next with like you said with drew it's still that shaky thing and i'm gonna get back into that uh but with brock look at these people that he's built and now ask yourself did you ever think coffee could beat these people in a fight fight not just for let's go coffee you want to see him in a match go up against Seth Rollins. And so for them, it's like, if you think about him and Seth, no no doubt him and Seth would have a great match. Do they believe that's going to be booked and be sold into something? There's a 50-50 chance in that. Roman Reigns, the powerhouse that he is now, no way they want to see him wrestle coffee for 20 minutes after he just bombarded people that's way bigger than coffee. And then you brought you bring in Drew. Now, just because they've written in Drew wrong, this is their way to little slip that in, but it also lowers both of their caliber as one another. So now take that and now put this up against the biggest person that's built all three of these people. No way you want to see him do a Finn Balor or Daniel Bryan in their eyes. So it's like, yo, we can't lower Brock by having him wrestle and deal with this guy for 10 minutes. Cause then it's like, if he can do it, anybody can do it. Then what's to say Dolph can't walk up and go, I want to challenge the beast for this. Not Dolph, oh, no. But you, but you see how they've built Brock oh. into that. Now you see why those nine seconds now make more sense. And it's, I mean, it's still, and honestly, and the thing is, what's done is done with it. It's just, I felt like with all the momentum he had, like that, I mean, I felt that 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 could have been a chance to to make Kofi one of those guys. And I was like, okay, are you saying Kofi or Coffee? I got, I got. Both. I mean, I heard, because real quick, I heard Coffee, I was like. <laughs> Listen, I, I've, 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 I've said, hey, hey, you know what, too, though? That kind of goes back to them, too, and that slap in the face, because. When he was from Kingston, it was Kofi. Then now when he finally got to be himself, it's Kofi. You remember when when he, when he finally broke that Jamaican accent and Triple H and just like, what is he Jamaican? Wait a minute. I thought you were Jamaican or something. Did you have an accent? He was... But even I... too though, that's why I'd be like, they be talking <laughs> shit about Triple H, but I'd be like, yo, Triple H has saved a lot of people yeah. creative wise that people really want to give him credit for. Cause... Because that because that was a good way to just go ahead and say, Hey man, let's. I know you tired of that because I remember he too when he had said in the interview a while back, like he, you know, they don't really let them say a lot of things like that, especially coming from that country. They just kind of, you know, make you seem like yo, you're a black wrestler, and it's just like yo, I'm not, I'm not from there. Like I'm from Africa. Same thing with like Apollo. I don't know if he's really from Nigeria or anything like that, but it's just like inhibiting them to go like to fit into this box along I with your character. And I agree. Speaking of Apollo, though, I mean, and I know we'll, we'll get back to Rob, but this bitch, like, I, in my honest opinion, I love Apollo. I love the push he's getting. I think he deserves it. I wish Triple H would come in there and pull the accent for him, too, because it's terrible. The accent that Apollo was saying on SmackDown is the worst, the worst accent. Why do you need Nigerian. it? Why do you? Know. He didn't need it. Like, when, when it was, like, embracing his history, I'm like, fine. I love it. I love yeah. that part. I was like, great. 
Nigerian royalty, I'm all in. You want to have that, or maybe have the accent come out only when he gets mad or something like that. And, something, and, it, but in certain well, keywords, certain keywords, yeah. you know, like how you got to put that emphasis on and then you hear it come out. Like, yeah, you have like, to like change your voice. Like, 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 imagine Apollo having Biggie in the in the corner choking the web. He's like, look at me. Look at me, you know, and his eyes like bald now. He like moments like that, intense, yeah. like, and you feel like, oh, this boy Apollo going off the edge with this match. Yeah, but him doing it all the time, and we know that that he doesn't talk like that because we've watched him on WWE for years, not have an accent. It just doesn't make any sense, and it's yes. like I, I'm sorry, we give I'm, but, but, uh, back to Raw. I apologize. No, 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 back no. to Raw. Honestly, pretty much everything I'm forgetful. Um. A uh, waste of time. The main event scene is going to be uh, figured out um, next week. I'm 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 expecting a triple threat or a, or a, some type of fatal four way match. Hell in a cell. A whole bunch. Of everybody. The star. Everybody in there. Braun's being there too. Um, the women tag team title scenes. I I mean they deserve so much better than what they get. Um, I, RK bro is. I'm uh, sorry. We got we got. I, I gotta say this because we okay. <laughs> Oh my god. I just want to be in that room when they were just like, okay, we obviously don't have enough women on here to make tag teams. But you know what? We know the women's division need a new belt. I think we should make the women's tag team championship and we should have them defending on all brands. There, there's the women's European championship, there's the women's intercontinental championship. There's the women's U.S. title, even a women's television title, a women's hardcore title. Yeah, you went with tag teams and had no tag teams, but maybe then, two or three. And on top of that, you give NXT their own set when it's already like three or four tag teams on that show as it is, as it is. You pair people who shouldn't be paired up as solos and then give them a team. So yes, Sha- you've I- been giving Shossie Blackheart this entire push. Now she's in a tag team with Amber Moon. Why? Because they both weird? <laughs> I think I think what they said, you guys both like the kind of dark nocturnal rock stuff. Perfect, perfect. Put them together. Yeah, put them yeah, together. yeah, yeah. You put you hop together. on her tank and y'all all come out there and, and, and yeah. be fun and shit. Yeah, and, and and the thing is too, and like and like much praise to uh, to Ember and Shotzi, of course, for making the best of what they're given. They always give their best. Oh, yeah. Especially, I'm a big fan of Ember Moon, especially. Yes. But it's like they should be single stars going after the title. They should not be. They're not tag team. It's right. not a tag. Not only that, like, <sighs> okay, we go, we, we go, we go, uh, we go, we gonna get back to Raw so we can wrap that up. But uh, I know, don't I, it make you mad? It, it do because <laughs> what really makes me upset is the Raquel Gonzalez thing. Because, and no disrespect to her, but too soon. Way too soon. I forgot she was champion, dude. I was about to, I, I was about to say EO Shirai. Bro, I forgot that, she won that belt. Bro, that is my point. Man. Like, you had the possibility to build this woman to be the next China, and you didn't do it. Because she had a, a what, a no-holds-barred street fight with Rhea Ripley. You think that gives her the right to get the title? When we know a year ago she wasn't really hitting like that? Yeah, a year ago, y'all were calling her green. They were like, y'all were calling her green online and and the locker rooms and all that though. And the thing is, and I, I'm not saying she's not a good talent. And again, I, I think too, in a, a disclaimer, of course, we, we all say this too. Like, we're not coming down on wrestlers themselves. You guys know that we're coming down on creative yeah. and how these people are booked because yes. all these guys are great athletes. They, yes, everybody they can go. If you're yes. in this company, that means you can go. Exactly. But the way they have them booked, it's like mm-hmm. I, I I forgot she was a champion. Right. The only thing, I, only thing I remember from her for her reign is when Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley all came out more or less kind of broke character and just kind of had a heartwarming moment just for, you know, the, uh, you know, for full, you know, for all the NXT people who watched yeah. from the beginning, that's really it. That's it. I mean, it's been flattened out. Rhea's been flattened out. I feel there's, you can still read, you can still fix it, but the storylines I feel are going nowhere, which brings us back again to Raw. Rhea right. Ripley's storyline on Raw with Charlotte. I don't see, Every the like, the, pro, the problem is everything is happening sporadically, and I, I you know and I want to give them like some leeway in saying okay it's because of you know like the pandemic, COVID people schedulings and stuff like like that but that's not the case. 
And just as you said, Jenny, dude, like we're not we're not knocking down any wrestle. If anything, it's because we believe in these folks so much. Just like as I mentioned yeah. with Raquel Gonzalez, is that you're you're not utilizing her talent as you should because of how wonderful she could be. And you're not exactly. giving these people time to develop over in these new brands, just like how you did with Rhea the first time, and you let Charlotte go over. That made no sense at all. No sense whatsoever, but you didn't want her to fall to her yet. So why book it at all? So now yeah. you have it to where we're picking this back up and whatnot, and we're not really picking it back up. It's just because I'm, which basically we're only watching two women beat up probably one of the greatest female wrestlers and champions we've had in the last mm -hmm. five years. No disrespect to Charlotte, no disrespect to uh, Sasha, no disrespect for Becky's epic one year run that she had, just, just pointing yeah. that out. Also yeah. Bailey as well. But if we really go have a conversation about who reigned supreme and did they thing, don't none of them hold a candle to Oscar. And nope. the way she being treated right now is insane to me. None of, none of them carried the NXT women's title like she did. None of them were undefeated like she was. None of them carried from both brands over and the tag team titles. Yeah. And because yep. you brought her up so high and, you know, eventually everybody got to, you know, that momentum got to go down. You got to pay your dues and stuff like that. But this ain't how you treat someone like that. Yeah. She had that all that run and she lost to Charlotte. And then, and then after all that to say, Charlotte was ready for Oscar. What, like, uh, to me, to me, if anything, let's say, like, I felt if anything, that's where you would have flipped what you did with Shinsuke and AJ and bring it to Oscar. You have Oscar turn heel, get it with the mist and win that title. She stays undefeated. Make her the new heel then. Fine. But she should have won that night. She should have won that night with that title. Because mm -hmm. at that point, it's like, because you just, she went, she dominated NXT. Yeah. Dominated. All for what? And I'm not saying anything about it against Charlotte, though, but it, it didn't do anything in the long run. It, it's, it's, it's all on what you bet on now. And because, you know, like we said, like, you know, we, we, we talked about earlier, crowds are different and, you know, this new age is different. It is because now it's more of, it's not as, as when we grew up, it wasn't as much about merchandise and selling stuff as it is yeah. now and being incorporated into every aspect of media as it is now. And so even though, like I said, I do, I do, I, you know, we're very passionate about these things, but I also myself, I know how to look at both sides from a creative and also a financial. Yeah. From these perspectives. And again, this is not to give them a pass at it. But these creatives here are looking at how do we push this women's champion as a brand? Now, yeah. Charlotte can go ring the bell at Wall Street. Charlotte mm -hmm. can go on Good Morning America and promote Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Oscar don't really speak English. So there's a lot of missed opportunities when she's champion in their eyes. Yeah. So it's great for fight wise, it's great for storyline wise, but we're losing money when the women's champion can't go to make a wish. Yeah, that's a true point. And that's a and the thing is too, it's a hard reality. And the thing is, I get it too. But it's like we also you get it, and then without, but then you also don't want it either. Right, like right. From the story from the storyline perspective, you get it though, but like I said, but for the business end, because again. World Wrestling Entertainment is not WWF how we watched it in 98. Mm -hmm. It's not the same company. It's not the same thing. Like you said, too, the brand wise, it looks better to have a Charlotte on his red carpet. Charlotte is much more geared to what the American audience is used to in terms of like, it's especially like with the language barrier. Because Asuka, I want to say Asuka can speak much better English than they give her credit for. Yeah, she can. But, I, but, but, but knowing the company that is WWE, those higher ups, it still isn't good enough to their standards. I'm mm -hmm. certain. Mm -hmm. Same thing but with Shinsuke. Like, yeah, same thing. Exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Exact same thing. And it's like, and Shinsuke was so over that year. He was. But again, too, but again, now, ask him to read a promo for a cricket commercial. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and you can't you can't hold this yes. if you can't sell cricket. And I'm gonna tell y'all right now, as much as y'all, as much as like people, and again, I love watching WWE, but we're gonna call it down what it is. Kofi Mania was by accident. Had Kofi, had we had Houston, because it was at Houston Elimination Chamber. Mm-hmm. That's where and I was there too. That's where Kofi Mania started. We were yep. going crazy for Kofi. Yep. Had that not happened, and the, and they heard that. And had they not looked at Kofi's history sales of sales with New Day and saw that only John Cena was beating them out at one point, they're like, yo, put it on him. And that's why. If, if he wasn't selling merch, if he couldn't sell merch, they probably wouldn't have even considered it. They probably would have kept going with whatever they were going. Because it's like you said, it's a business. But also, also, so but, also uh, but like you said, also, too, it was timing because Daniel Bryan's yeah. stuff was going out because his stuff was getting yeah. stale as the, the you know, environmental champion. But also, too, you yeah. have a person who doesn't mind laying down for the next person to elevate yeah. the brand. And that's yeah. Daniel Bryan. And that's always been him. Because, again, Daniel, and, and then he, he got to live his dream again. I go to WrestleMania as champ. Yeah. I, li- I, I lived it once where I was the underdog. Now I'm the top dog and I get to give it to someone who is well deserving of it. I'm yeah. going to give a hell of a match like they did. And he did. I'm about to say he did. The fact that he did the honors for, for Kofi like that too. Mm-hmm. And like, it wasn't, hey, he barely won. No, when 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 he hit Trouble in Paradise, like Brian stayed down. It wasn't yeah. like I kicked out the last second, Mm-mm. a la Hulk Hogan, a la Bradshaw. So I'm like, you know, some stuff like that. No, he stayed down. And he yeah. let him have the moment. It wasn't no like afterbirth of nonsense. It was a, a, a clean win and celebration that I ain't gonna lie. I got teary eyed watching. I'm not oh, yeah. gonna lie to you. Yeah, because you because you, you just you didn't think he was gonna get it. Like you all you like I, you. I, we all know it's like it'd be that last second where they just yeah. like why. But when you heard head, three and you were like, yeah. And, and then the, and Xavier ran in, and I was like, "Bro!" And to and to give him the belt with his plates on it right there. Yes, I was oh, like, wow. "Yo, that yes." I was everybody. Was, everybody was that MVP yeah. video. Everybody, oh, yeah, bro. we all everybody. were just. Everybody. Yes, because from because again because and I tell people too, we know. I've known from jump that it's predetermined. Like since I was a kid, mm-hmm. like I'm not. I never thought wrestling was like you know. Oh, they're really out there fighting for the world. Well, you know, of course, why wouldn't they go to jail? You know, I, I thought that as a kid. My, well, well, you know, I, I got I got to break it for it like this because a lot of people say it and they don't necessarily understand what that means. Because I used to wrestle, um, and I used to yeah. wrestle with uh, Booker T's uh, people mm-hmm. that he trains. What folks don't understand is that it is predetermined mm-hmm. to an extent. Yes, so, it's yes, not we, fake, y'all. It's not Wrestling fake. It's not fake. It's definitely not fake. And the point it's of the matter fake, is. Y'all. Like, let's say, for instance, you and I are going to face at Hell in the Cell. We don't know who's winning till our match is about to start. Like, when we, like, so for yeah. those that want to know the behind the scenes, where you see that big stage they come out, right there, there's a curtain there where they come out. Right there is a room. And right there in that room is sitting the head of this fucking whole company, Vince McMahon, watching the show. And it isn't until you get there that they tell you, you're going over tonight or you're going over tonight. And sometimes you may know a little bit earlier in advance and then sometimes something may happen, like a coffee mania in Houston, and everything alters. So when you get up there, they're like, well, no, we're deciding that Chinadu is going to go over tonight. And it's like, okay, how do you want to close this? We can call it. We already know everything else out because I know your moves. You know my stuff. We're good to go to where we can safely not harm one another. We just have to figure out how we're going to close this out. And then that's where we go. So it's no thing of like, you know, the winner firsthand all the time and stuff like that. And even so, too, that's a hard thing to prepare for. Because it's like, okay, I know you're going over, but how do we make this now look good? Yeah. And and, and it's and I, it, it's so much truthful because the, and you watch that match, the pain they're going through, those bumps, those all that, that's all real. Mm-hmm. Like running the ropes. The first time I ran the ropes, all this, like all this was mm-hmm. on fire. Yep. There is no give. There is no take to it. You mm-hmm. are going to blitz. Listen, the, one dude told me, he's like, you'll be our right, man. Like, once you callous up, you only feel it. I was like, once I callous up, what? Yeah, that is definitely That's, a term. It's, yes. It's, yes. Uh, once, you, once you've done that, once you've taken bumps, you just kind of get used to it. It's like, once your adrenaline kicks in, it's like, when you're there, you're there. So it's just like, yo, well, I don't really feel a lot of this, but that next day, you just. Yeah. All that hurt. Oh, shit. I took, 
I took bumps one time, and I realized, yeah, I'm meant to be a fan. I'm not meant to be in this ring like that. That's why, once again, much respect to guys like Kofi and especially Daniel Bryan for, mm-hmm. like, being such a great foe for him to be because that was, you know, like, because I feel in rivalries, you're only as great as the villain. Yeah. And I felt like mm-hmm. I felt like that was Daniel Bryan's, like, peak of villain because everything I felt, because he was, like, the justified villain in a way. And I felt yeah. those are the best kinds. Because oh, everything yeah. he was saying was more or less true. Like he was like, yeah, you guys will do this. You guys will destroy the environment, and all that. I'm like, he he's actually telling the truth, mm-hmm. and and which is why like someone like Daniel Bryan is such a hot commodity in wrestling to this day, which brings us. I think our next topic was the Daniel Bryan predictions. Am I not correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna like, move on to the next one, uh, Daniel Bryan. So uh, for those if you if you haven't caught up, if you haven't kept up, and for those that have kept up, uh, Daniel Bryan. Um, for those that you know, some people are gonna be watching this, be like, I thought he retired. You know. Got uh got his neck fixed, been back in the ring doing his thing as Daniel Bryan does. Uh, Daniel Bryan uh recently was put into the uh, main event of WrestleMania in Tampa and for the two night event. He was in the second night versus himself, uh, Roman Reigns and Edge for the Universal Championship. Uh, that has been a feud between himself and Roman Reigns. Has been going back and forth. Recently, they had a match on SmackDown for the Universal Championship, and the stipulation was if Daniel Bryan was to lose, he would no longer be able to be on SmackDown. Now, one of the reasons why this was done, and unfortunately he did lose that match, is because Daniel Bryan's contract has expired with the WWE, and no one really knows what Daniel Bryan is going to do next because people wanted to believe that him saying this last wrestlemania was a thing of because the contract is expiring but a lot of people are also believing it's saying that because daniel bryan may be planning on retiring um as you as we both know uh he is expecting a second child with uh brie bella as well so you know it, it's it, 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 here, here's here's the question that we ask what would be next for daniel bryan if to stay, if to go somewhere else, like you have probably one of the top five wrestling moments in history. And I don't just mean WWE. Miracle on Bourbon Street is going to live oh, yeah. forever. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can't top that. Like it, yes. it, it, it was a beautiful story. So listen. Ew. Like all those fans is going crazy and, and him holding those two belts. That was oh, you lucky amazing. I'm all doing right here. I was about to. <laughs> I know, oh, yeah, I was like everybody, yes, yes. yes. Like and and, I t- and honestly, at first, when I first heard about Dan Bryan's contract, I thought it was a storyline. I was like, okay, you know, he'll he'll take a break because you know, because I felt at this stage in his career, he wanted to be, you know, a uh, full time dad, part time wrestler. I'm like, okay, yeah. he's gonna go home, recharge his battery. He'll probably be back, maybe Rumble, something like that, maybe mm-hmm. Survivor Series. He'll be back in a while. But no, his real contract has expired with World Wrestling Entertainment. He no longer works there. I'm like, so, wow. So I felt first first and foremost, what a great way to go out. I mean, yeah. that's how you do it. Yeah. I mean, main event, because they gave them a half hour on SmackDown. They did. They that. that was a great match. And Roman match. beat him clean. Yes. yes. Clean. Yes. With, with, the, with the submission. Yeah, with the submission. With the submit, that's what makes me believe too. This, this, like, bro, like, there's, like you just said, it ended perfect. You went out with the top dog, and not only that, you gave the top dog a run for his money. But not only that, unlike Brock's ass, you now made yourself more accessible for us to see more feuds with the superstars on SmackDown. I believe Cesaro can have a chance. Hell, I believe Dolph Ziggler could get a chance. I because guess, Daniel yeah. Bryan took you to, that's one thing I really love about Roman. And we're going we're gonna to get into uh, Roman in just a little bit after we finish these predictions, is that he's willing to take them hits like that. And so um, I, I, for me, my prediction is, I think Daniel Bryan should be just like how Batista was, go out on your own terms. You headlined yeah. WrestleMania. You have one again, one of the top moments in wrestling history. Don't undertake her this. Please. Do please. not undertake her this. Please. We love Mark Calloway too. Love him. <laughs> to that, for, 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 <laughs> H-Town Native. Come on, man. Like, yo, but just even he knew, like, I should have left after I lost to Roman at WrestleMania. 
Because I had that play, per- bro, like, I know they got Roman like this, but I just always wanted to say this because one part of this uh, podcast we do get into is called Fantasy Booking. We're going to get into that just a little bit later. Um, I just, just, just let me paint this picture for you. I want to take you back to WrestleMania when he lost to Roman. Clothes are folded in the middle of the ring. Just, I want you to just, just close your eyes and I want you to just, just follow this story and tell me if this would have been dope. Undertaker walks up the ramp, goes down, has his hand up like he did, disappears. The whole thing goes black. Undertaker disappears. Fuck the ramp going down. He stands there, disappears. Lights come back on. These clothes are being worn and someone standing in the ring. Camera zooms in, lifts their head up, and it's Roman Reigns. And he rolls his eyes back and then fade to black. Oh. oh. Hell, that would have been a fire ass ending. All you hear is the bell, the, the, the bell toll, he rolls up, doom, and it just cut off. Because you know, and then on top. And then with that plus the heat he got the next night, remember he came out there, they booed him up like 10 minutes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> F you Romans. Yes. Straight F you Romans. That that Dang. could have been what he turned heel. Like what he is now, yeah. that's yeah. what could that he could have been. That's what he could have really did it. Because his response was so cold. This is my yard now. And just dropped the mic and left. I was like, yo, you here. You here now, bro. I was like, yo, I see it. This they 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 believe in him and he gonna run with that. And I have no doubt. I, I feel the I feel us getting into the Roman energy. Let me drop my prediction here before I got into I, my prediction, honestly. I think he's gonna he may come back to WWE when he wants to come when he wants to recharge. I don't see him going to Ring of Honor. I don't see him going to Impact. I don't see him going to AW. Because for what? Why? For what? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-mm. I, like you Who said, I see, the- yeah, I see special matches, maybe like a run like he did with the general manager thing and stuff like that. But like you said, just playing it easy. Playing it easy, bro. Like your legacy is is solid. Like he could even go do a match in like Japan, as a, but like a whole spectacle thing. Like, you know, like, hey, yes. I'm, I'm going to take on like now that. Yes. Yeah, and it's just a one night thing. That's it. I'm not signing. I'm just doing one one night with this yeah. person to give this a match, and then that. Yeah, be and, and, and you know, and, and wrestling in New Japan, it's like Brian. You know, you know, Vince won't. You, Vince not even care about that. Mm. Like are you wrestling uh-huh. where? You don't even care. He don't. Well, also too, I, that one thing I like about that is because of Japan. Japan don't really. They're all, they're about themselves. So it's just like yo, we want to build this. We're only worried about us right here. So we're gonna keep building this up. So it's just like yo. If we could do that and have that cross promoter where we got some folks that's WWE and they some staples there and people got you know respect for them there, just hey, you know, I ain't tripping. Yeah. No. Like, and like I said, if for new if for New Japan, they're not interested in like making Dan Bryan their guy for the next five years. They're interested in building a great, like maybe three to six month feud, great blow off match, good payday. Mm-hmm. Wham good. bam, thank you, ma'am. Yep. Here's your here's your paycheck, Mr. Bryan. Thank you for coming. Yep. Him that's and Will Osprey would be great right now. That would. They and, need man. And again, Daniel don't win. He he's just building up will. That's it. No, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't just, win. Yeah. Is a uh, uh, Osprey a hurt though? I heard he was hurt. I thought no. I don't know. But I, I, I I'd have, we'd have to look on that because I know he's dual champion right now. I know he's heavyweight yeah. and intercontinental, which is yeah, a very yeah. So we we gonna see. But I, I you yeah. know we 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 gonna get into them uh, yeah. later into this podcast down the line and stuff like that. Because like I said, we talk about everything here on Kayfabe, and so like we want to get right back into that Roman Reigns energy. So Roman Reigns, Roman. um, has you know like not not to be that guy, but he is really acting like his shirt. He has wrecked everything since he's came back. And I did at first it didn't make sense, but now I'm like I'm all for it. The tagline they had in 2020, they said SummerSlam, you'll never see it coming. I promise you, I did not. Nope. I, when I, I tell you, yeah, that was one time they got me because I yep. did not see that coming at all. I told I remember I told uh Cleo Thomas that when we after after it went off, I was like, Yeah, they did that. I did not see that coming. Did not see that coming whatsoever yeah i never thought they were going to turn rain's heel i mean they because that I mean dude it's like they spent half a decade half a decade of wrestlemania trying to get this guy to be the top baby face 
I was like, they're all they're they're too invested in that. No, they're just not gonna do it. Hey, you know, you know what ruined it though? And don't nobody talk about this. I'm gonna tell you what ruined it. What? I I may have a year wrong. Royal Rumble 2015. I believe that was the one he had when it was him in the Royal Rumble, just him and I believe Rusev was left. Yeah. And The Rock came down to help him. Oh, man. That's when everyone lost respect for Roman because now you weren't that guy. You're the golden boy. And we now yeah. know that. We now know my- you're Cena. You are now, you're John Cena. And you yeah. just, we now know the powerful family you have behind you. And it was like, because you know, you're looking at like, so they booked The Rock to, to like smooth this over because you guys know we love The Rock. They booed The Rock. Right. We was like, what are you doing? Why Why would y'all do this? Why? Why would you do this? Because firstly, like, firstly, Rock, what the hell are you doing here? First of all, like, just randomly in the back. And, and then too, it was just like, y'all mean to tell me Roman can't handle Rusev by himself? Big Show and Kane? Like, they made it just so lopsidedly predictable that he was going to win. Like, who would believe any one of these, like, Big Show, Kane, or Rusev would win this Royal Rumble? You and it's just like, like, and it's just like, I get it. Like, they, they, you know, trying to stack everything. Roman can handle these people. This wasn't yeah. no, like, hella odds against him. Like, if Seth and all of them were out there messing with him, yeah, very much different. Like, if they were beating him up in the ring and getting ready to toss him out, would have went over so much smoother. Yeah. This is just but, regular. Yeah, and this isn't like this isn't like 2001 Kane or like 97 Big Show. This is this is the old these the old these are I'm still I, I do this over the rope, but if I can, I can lose this at any minute. And like what? I move like this like they move like standard action figures that you buy at Walgreens. Like they don't have the same uh, range of motion no more. Yeah, he can't go all the way. And I love, we get love Paul and all, but like, I did not believe that these older guys could beat the young bull, Roman. Right. And I was like, it just. Right. And like, when you can predict the last, what, five, 10 minutes of the Royal Rumble, it's a bad Royal Rumble. Yeah, it is. It's a bad Royal Rumble. So, yeah. And but so- now, the reboot they've given him as the tribal chief, and now the music he has, the which music. I feel that's what was missing. Okay. So that's, that's what so- he needed. Definitely when I heard it, I was like, yes. Yeah. Yes. This 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 is it. This the is your it. music needed to die and never, ever, ever come back. It, ne- it needed to die because it can't come back. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm gonna still be that dude. I don't care what nobody <laughs> say. I'm always that guy. If I hear Sierra, Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta. Delta. Shit, Delta. I'm gonna shit. flip my shit. I will <clears throat> flip my shit out. But like you now, said, though, yeah. It needs to leave so he can build yeah. what this is. And I'm so glad uh, and stuff like that, that that happened because of the simple fact now I see you and I see you representing not only the company, but your family. And that's mm-hmm. the shit I love. About. I love this bloodline storyline. Yes. Love it. I, I love, love it so much. Cause it, it, cause like it had been there for so long, right there, bro. Oh, and I'm just like, and I'm just like, yo. I know they used to be, but I'm like, can you bring the Messiah in? It's kind of like work Ooh. too, like just like yo, like let him do his stuff, but still like let him know, like yo, you mess with him, you mess with the tribal chief. Yo, like they would rule with an iron fist. But we gonna get into that. We gonna get into that. Yes. Yes. But I, but I say now, honestly, like Roman is, Roman is the the best thing about WWE right now, like yes. by by a lot, yes, by a whole lot, like the like the, the entire storyline, him feuding whoever he feuds with, they're now elevated. Jay Uso, yep. elevated. Mm-hmm. Kevin, yep. the matches with Kevin Owen, I was all into them. Bro. Amazing matches. Yes, matches with Cesaro. So I've never Cesaro has never looked more of a credible person in the championship title picture than right now yes yes and i so long and right now it's, it's, it's looking like they got jimmy uso pegged in to like do that too and i don't believe any of these guys will beat roman mm-hmm. but it's the fact that now that he's feuding with roman i see them in a better light now and like yeah. a more main event scene like like 
Jimmy was always used that guy that they thought would be the breakout star anyway. Mm-hmm. And so now they have a chance to play on that. I have a feeling they're going to like bring up the last hell in a cell where Roman choked out Jimmy Uso to get uh, Jay Uso to, to say he quit. Yeah. And I feel they're going to play on that. And I think I just, I'm just so excited because I don't know what's going to happen. And I like that. About I, yeah, yeah, life. I do too. Because I don't know if I, I like that it wasn't, I'm immediately joining the line. And now, because now it's more of, I want to be the tag team mm-hmm. champions again. But the way he's saying it is, I want to be the tag team champions, but I don't want to be under with this, with this, how you are. Yeah. But I love it because Jay has never been better than he has now. And so yeah. even the way I look at it, I'm like, yo, if I hope it, I was like, I hope they do you like he did, Jay. Beat you into submission <laughs> and y'all take them titles. Because think about it, like Jay, Jay may be that timid role that he played when he with Roman, but yo, these matches he had, like with Daniel, Cesaro, phenomenal. Amazing. And they already good as a tag team. So imagine with now that they got these strengths and they come back as a tag team, and that's yeah. along with the tribal chief. Oh, that's a wrap, yeah. bro. Because to me, I would I wouldn't hate, and I know some people be like, that's too long, but honestly, the way they have him booked, I wouldn't hate it if Roman carried that belt to the next mania. Bro, I'm telling you, Rome, Romans that and that's what the thing that this whole thing was was what's next for Roman Reigns. And and my thing is the next thing now is record breakers. Like you said, it's time to start breaking these records that've been here. Like like you said, I think I like for me, I think Roman Reigns is probably going to hold the longest championship in our history outside of what, and they're gonna split. You know what's funny? They're gonna split that just so they can make it higher. Because uh, just a side note, and one thing I'm definitely they need to give more credit to in the person and, and who gets the underdog of the day, Walter. Walter hey, does not listen, get the respect he deserves. Listen. And held that belt for seven years now. Okay, Bro, that man up there with Bruno <laughs> San Martino, and that record was held what in the seventies, and he and he knocking on it, and not only knocking on it representing with it not like no like oh y'all just letting him hold it who you know finna beat walter nobody nobody and i'm be so real i would love to see brock versus walter but i know brock don't care about nxt uk oh no no we 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 knew that when they when they brought him up once and they did him the way they did him that's how we knew it was like we know you don't know what to do with walter yeah, but I was so kind of I was I was kind of okay with it because I was like I get it y'all don't want us to see what he can do with these people and then take your prime jewel away from UK because you're still yeah. building up UK you still need yeah. someone to he's do that because they still need him he's their yeah. top guy yeah he's is. still yeah. the top guy yeah Ty, Ty, here, just, I'm, like, I'm sorry like this dude out here like this dude literally like like slapping like like holes in boys chest the match he had with Pete Dunn. Oh my god. That was great. But the one with him and Tyler yeah. Bate? Oh my bruh. Listen. Bruh. Listen. I've never seen brutality like that. <laughs> like like beating the crap, like beating the ish out of each other for like what was was that an hour? An hour. And then to end it, I gotta I I gotta power bomb you like five times till you go unconscious so I can pin you. But you see that, back to something we were saying earlier, that is the balance between the David and Goliath thing when you have someone who cares about brand and the show rather than themselves with Brock and yeah. Coffee. Yeah. You could have took trouble in paradise from coffee. You could have took things from coffee. You didn't want to do it. Yeah. Same way you don't want to face Bobby Lashley. Why? Because Bobby Lashley will kick your ass. And you don't want to go through that. But that's not what we're here for right now. We're still here on Roman yeah. Reigns, and we're going to definitely move into another uh because we were talking about legends and going on and just who could exactly keep up with Roman as far as, like, these legends and stuff like that. And one person we want to talk about, if you had a legend come back and do something like that, would be Edge. Mm-hmm. Edge is a, another person. Yeah, on this day, <laughs> I see Queen Queen Billy. You can't hey. tell me you'll be on the treadmill just running like you run running to the ring. Everything is cast. Just get off the treadmill and just. 
Yeah, you hear you went for your pyro, you right. realize you're in the gym, they look at oh, you, shit. what are you doing? <laughs> Don't worry about what I'm doing. Okay? Don't worry. So loud. Like, sir, you can't be singing this loud in the gym. My fault. I don't know. Remember shit, man. You can't kick me out. Man, but yeah, man. Edge the same way. Daniel Bryan, uh, as Daniel Bryan, neck injury, return back. Has not had a bad match since came since he came back. Whatsoever. Um, won the Royal Rumble. Did not see that coming. Did yeah. not see that coming. Uh, I love that they had him stay in there as long as they did have him come in at number one. Did not see how that was going to play out. So I did enjoy that. Um, I got to actually see him perform live in Tampa. Triple threat match. Everything you saw on TV, just times five being there. And just like, yo, like, like I just, again, if, if you want to see anybody, top, top greatest returns for a legend and nobody's taking it from Edge. No, no, that I was, I was there at, uh, at a uh, minute May at Royal Rumble when he came back, when number 21 hit, I was there when we heard, you think you know me, everybody was on their feet. We could not believe him. When he came out, we are like, no, he's back. Bro, listen, Bro, I was my I, boy I, Justin. I, Look, like I just got I just got to throw this in there. When his music hit, I didn't even recognize what the song was. I was like, "Wait, who is this?" Because of the fact we you you would have never thought he was coming back. And I was just like, "Why does like, sound so done. familiar?" Yeah. And then it was like, "No, you got to be kidding." I was like, "That ain't who I think it." And he walked out. No, no, no. And I was like, "He's competing." Oh. Bro, I had to pause it. I had to pause yeah. it. I could I was like, yo, like my brain can't process what's happening right now. When he started to like cheer up and cry, there was a dude next to me. He's like, Edge, don't do it, man. I'm gonna cry. This dude next to me is like, don't do it, bro. We bro. Like when he bro. was right there, he was just hey, he's about to come on. It's like, don't, you... <laughs> don't do it, man. No. And the fireworks, I was about, like, don't worry about what I'm crying about. I just, yo, bro, and it's just like that entire run since then to now and just the elevation of that to go from one returning after being told you wouldn't ever return, then two, conforming to the way the world is now with the Thunderdome, no crowd, and still telling your story of how you want this to end. Yeah, with grit. With grit, and with you grit. showed that. Man, you took a concerto at yeah. WrestleMania and got pinned with another dude on top of you. Ultimate respect from both of those, for both them, yeah. him and Daniel Bryan. But the question is, we haven't seen him since then. So yeah. will Edge return, or was that it? Now, for me to start with the with the rumble winning, like I was surprised he didn't win too. Usually I want that to go to somebody that is trying to build up, but I felt for his story, it it was it was right for him to win. It made yeah. sense. It added to the story they were telling. And for him to lose to Roman made it even better because Roman is the guy they're building. Mm -hmm. I saw um now for me, I will uh I got my ticket to to, to the first uh to the first WWE live show in over a year. SmackDown will be in That's Houston true. in July. The go and show the money in the bank. They have Edge advertised for that show. Uh, they have them advertised, allegedly. Now, I don't know if they're doing it for or, or whatnot, though, but I do know the Otis Center is almost sold out because I could not get the seat I wanted initially. I was right there when it hit 10 o'clock and everything's almost sold out. Yeah. But I do have a feeling we will see him. I think I think he's going to uh, make his return for the for the live crowd because I think that's when I, – I know it's sad to say it, though, but I feel they're going to do kind of a re-kick, a reboot. Mm -hmm. restart when the live crowds come back because they kind of need to smackdown yeah. not so much but raw and maybe oh, yeah. in like just just because he needs that and and with his schedule i would think he's going to come back i mean I, i'm just wondering who he'll feud with though because i i think he's done with roman i think that's done it should be done yeah yeah um i see see but that's the thing though it's like outside of a championship run what else does Edge need to do? 
Ed solidified the tag team division with TLC along with Christian and all the Douglas yeah. and everyone else. He's yeah. had an amazing run as an intercontinental champion, U.S. champion. Yeah. It's just like if you think of the current roster today, there's no one, you know, like when he came back for Randy, it's like, yo, I got something to settle with you. Like you and I have yeah. a history. But everyone, that was bluff you. yeah, everyone that Edge used to wrestle with ain't there no more. So it's just kind of like if you're doing anything, it's to build someone else up that may be in the same caliber that or at least growing to that as you. But it's like, do we want to see that? And myself personally, no. Like, I think this was a great way to write that off unless you finna come back for Roman and take that title off of him. But again, there's no reason to do that right now. Yeah. There's no reason for you to be at the top of SmackDown because like you said, SmackDown is carrying everything. Yeah, and it's carrying everything. And as much as I love Edge too, like the reaction that Edge gets, we, because again, the younger audience doesn't fully know Edge the way we remember Edge. And right. Edge, is, Edge is almost a 50 year old man. Exactly. Roman is the guy, he's in his prime. He's with 34, 35 mm -hmm. in his prime. That's the yeah. guy who should be leading a brand I know sometimes they like to give the belts to certain acts for the nostalgia pop, but for me, I I, I just felt like it was never needed for him to win it like no, that to me. No. Like it was never needed. Like, cause mm -hmm. the fairy tale story comes for me, Ed's been a champion 13 times. He doesn't need that. Like what is, maybe if he never won it and he wants to win try one last time, but he's done it 13 right. times. And he and he, he said it the way he, and, and he said it the way he said it. I never lost it. So I at least want yeah. my shot at getting yeah. it back. I don't need to win it. I just want my shot at doing it yeah. on the grandest stage it. of them yeah. all. That's all yeah. I want. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need to win. Not only that, you now give me somebody who I do, if anyone else outside of this I wanted to face was Daniel Bryan. So you gave me yeah. two people I wanted to fight regardless in this day and age. Like the only person. I, you know what? I I, there's only one person I will accept Edge having a match with. And the only way he can have it, it got to be at WrestleMania. That's who? The rated R superstar versus the phenomenal one. That's I the, was about to say, they that's the only one I will accept. That's the only, one, one, I, I accept. That's the only the one I will only accept. One. That's it. If it ain't AJ yeah. Styles, I don't want to see it. I don't. <laughs> Edge, can, Edge can finally write that last chapter and in that on his own terms. Yeah, because I like you said too, because like who else is there? Nobody, there's nobody. I, I like, it's, it's for him at least, at the least yeah. for him. Like right now we just happen to be in that era of wrestling where your class is, is gone. Like, you know, like that's yeah. the thing we kind of had to face too, like with this last WrestleMania. This is yeah. the John Cena, Triple H. This was the first time them, Undertaker, have not, all three of them have not been featured in WrestleMania. Yeah. No this Goldberg. Feeling no Goldberg. Nothing. The pop. nothing. They already said mo most, most likely the next WrestleMania will be the first time where the Attitude Era is not included in WrestleMania whatsoever. Yeah. It will be from the, from the Reality Era up. No one else will yeah. be in there. And, and 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 the thing too, I know for a lot of people it's it's sad to hear, but I felt like because of bad booking, we held on to the Alice era so fondly for so long when in reality we should have been able to let it go a long time ago. Yeah. Because yeah. the ruthless aggression era should have carried us from it, but it didn't because it sucked. Well like it was all, well that and also the audience was changing. So it's like you can't yeah. be a ruthless aggression era with children. Like yeah, can be sitting here having whole, yeah. yeah JBL bust open uh, Eddie Guerrero with a chair and there's a 13 year old sitting right next to him like no yeah that's and like I mean, and 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 that's the truth too because the like the 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 13 year old who's watching it in '98 is now an adult in college now or they're on their way like they don't have time to like be in it like you mm -hmm. remember we're third we're all in right everything with WWE yeah. and I mean and like well, I mean now we get to be thankful as part of our job oh you know thankfully. But yeah. for the most part, though, <laughs> but for the most part, most adults like you get older, you don't have time for that anymore. Mm -hmm. And if you, and if you gonna go see it though, it needs to be something where you can bring your kids at. Which is why, again, I I do understand why they went PG because you couldn't imagine them doing that in 2021 where they had like hot lesbian action 
or they had X Pac and Blackface, or they had Goldust wearing lingerie. Mm -hmm. They had yeah, Braun panty matches. Oh no 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 no! Hold on, the top one, Edge's live sex tape. Man, you can't do that now. What? You could not do that now. No, not at all. Not at all. Hell no, man. It will cancel WWE immediately. Exactly. And, and it's so much so that like the, and like they're they're worried about their sponsors too much now. Like they pulled mm-hmm. Fabulous Moolah off that tie off that battle royal because Snickers says, look, that woman was a witch, which based on history, she kind of was. And they said if her name is on this, ours won't be. And they mm-hmm. said bye, Moolah. <clears throat> yep. I was like, um, okay. Yeah. I, was I, like, yeah. I, I, didn't, I was like, okay. I, 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 yeah, I didn't know any of that myself either. Like right. when it came, I was like, wow, I didn't know she was mm-hmm. doing all that. Well, that also the same reason why Bobby Lashley was treated the way he was treated. Because mm-hmm. Bobby Lashley built a career on two pillars that you don't use anymore. You were yeah. the ECW champion. No one cares. Mm-hmm. And yeah. your biggest moment is now centered around a person the entire world is not fond of and is also banned from like most social media so you can't even show the highlight of your career because of that yeah and so it's just like now what do you do but like luckily for him you know patience being able to go really be about this life bobby is now sitting at the top of the of the food chain as wwe champion and we're gonna definitely get into that but um you know we asked what you know will edge return someone else you know i just want to briefly cover about if gonna return or like wtf of where they are keith lee Man. where is where? keith lee damn and the thing is like and with keith lee I heard, we know that it's a, a medical reason. We know right. that, and of course, respect privacy and all that. Mm-hmm. But as fans, you can't help but to wonder, we haven't seen you since before the Royal Rumble. Right. Or Mia Yim, and I know they both got they got engaged, so congratulations to Mia yeah. Yim and Keith for your engagement. Definitely congrats to them, man. This yeah. is gonna be, I can't, can I wait, can I wait to, to see the photos, of course. Yes. But I was so excited when Keith Lee won when when he won the North American and World titles, I was excited to see him hold both of those at uh, at the Great American Bash for NXT. Yes. I was excited to see him debut on the main roster. He beat Randy Orton clean, clean. I clean, was like, bro. this is it. I was like, okay, <laughs> they finally got it right. And then next, and then the next week he lost his music. I'm like, okay, I like that music. And the next week his gear was different. I'm like, I don't like that gear. I'm sure he doesn't either. Though. Okay, make the best of it. And then he ended up in just a, a carousel feud that, like, every time it got close to him to be the champion, it just skipped right over him. He was involved with a feud with McIntyre and Sheamus for some reason. And the next thing you know, he was just gone. Yeah. And we haven't um, seen him since. <clears throat> and there the, the rumors that saying that Vince McMahon didn't get him. But for me, I was so confused because I felt like they were about to put the rocket on them because they gave him a 24. When they go out, when they pull the cameras out, to make a production or any type of package on you for the network, they have something invested in you. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done that. I don't see any 24 packages on Humberto Carrillo. No disrespect. I don't see any on Kalisto. I, ne- I don't see any on Grand Master Leak. I didn't see any on, uh, on, on, um, uh, what's his name? On, uh, what's his name? Uh, Swerve on Isaiah Swerve Scott. Oh, I don't yeah, see any. No. I don't see any of those guys I saw for Keith Lee. So clearly, they want to make him the guy. And his story was so compelling. And they presented him as if he was about to be the next force in WWE main roster. And next thing you know, he's gone. And I'm not saying it's of any fault of anybody else, whatever, though, because, you know, his medical reasons, that's his, that, that, that is his privacy. We respect that, of course. But again, too, you can't help but to wonder, man, where is where is the glorious one? Because I, I, he... I, I, I know exactly what it is. It's what is fat. <laughs> you think like, Yeah. It's the same <laughs> think about it, it's the same thing Vinnie Mac told Kevin. Lose that weight or you not on here. And and not only for for just of that reason, and I'm not saying that to be insulting to Keith Lee whatsoever. It's the thing you and I talked about uh that we frequently brought up when it comes to these indie people now moving to the big leagues. Keith Lee is an amazing athlete. 
Keith Lee is a spectacle in the ring. First of all, Keith Lee is a Texas boy, so you know we want to protect him as much as possible. Just like how you said when when the music changed. What the heck y'all doing? Hey, 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 man. Yeah. Hey, y'all hey, better man. stop making these chains. We didn't ask for that. You let us bask in this man glory. But I love how the Houston came out of you real quick. Like, <laughs> oh, I was hot. I was hot. I'm like, yo, bro, y'all better stop messing with Keith Lee. Like, cause when he when he first lost them titles to Carry, and I was like, Okay, y'all must be about to bring him up. Y'all, that, I'm like, you better be about to bring him up because if he ain't getting, and I was like, that's why he got, that's why Karen got injured too. Just because y'all was messing with Keith Lee. You bet that's bad juju and you shouldn't do it. Yeah. But you got to, we have to remember though, these people are on tour and their bodies are being put to the test way more than it was when they were in the Indies. So yeah. now you take somebody that it like Keith Lee, who you are putting into those prime spots, but have to keep running this stuff consistently for almost 325 days out of the year. And then not only that, having to be in the top running of it, that is a way on your body. And you know, both of us with Texas boys, the older we get, these, these frames that we have, like it's hard to sustain in the mode that he is. Like, again, like Keith Lee is remember if Keith Lee slimmed down, Keith Lee's weight dropped it a little bit, it would be more presentable to believe you can keep doing these acts that you're doing. But just like, I know folks his size. We know him from playing football. We've seen him like that, where they do these amazing yeah. things. And then we hear when they hit 40, they no longer with us. Yeah. And that, and that is a huge concern I've always had for him. Is that like, yo, bro, I, I would love for you to drop some of this weight so that way you can sustain yourself a lot longer than what's going on. Now, I don't know if that's the case right now as to why he isn't here or why he isn't there, but it's just like, we are deeply invested in you, Keith Lee, just as far as fans being behind you, bro. Like, not only do we want to see you shine and like you said, bask in your glory, but we want you to have a great life. Yeah. We think it's dope you with me and we, we think it's dope that you happy you finally getting the shine that you want and we just want it to we just don't want it to end early. I don't want another Eddie Guerrero. I don't I'm, either, not, I'm not ready for that. I'm not I'm not me. ready for that. So I that's agree. what I don't want. Yeah, and I and 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 I and like that's the part of it too. And like and, and like you said, you know, for those of you that that are new to the show, Will used to wrestle. So there's a part there's a perspective of this too though, that like as fans we may not think of at first, like I said, but the rest, but one who wrestles and who knows the rigor and the ups and downs and the costs and the dues of being a wrestler, yeah. like behind the scenes, health wise and all that though, those are very valid points though. I mean, I gotta agree. Cause like, cause on indie scene and we talked about this, you know, uh, off air, mm -hmm. you know, for some of these uh, independent promotions, your, your top guy may be wrestling like twice a month. WWE, you could wrestle like five times that week. Yeah. And that's outside and like, of just main channel stuff. Like, yeah, you're touring. Yes. Doing and squash matches, black matches, like all kinds of, or well, dark matches, excuse me. Yeah. And stuff like that. So it's just like, yo, it's a lot. Yeah, it's the live lot. shows, European tours, all that stuff. It's And, yeah. you're, you know, and, and I, I'm a comedian. Touring as a comedian, when I tour across, when I tour across my state, across my country, it's hard to eat right just touring as a comedian. Mm -hmm. You can only imagine what it's like touring as a wrestler. And you have to get in so many calories trying to find a gym, cut taking care of your own traveling, your own hotel, you're paying for it, you're scheduling it all yourself. Yep. It's very different. You doing all that, you think you got time to sit down and like eat five to six healthy meals a day? And gotta uh, work out and and yeah. continue to stay in that position and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I, I get it. So I just hope like it, it, it wherever you are, Keith Lee, I just hope like yo, like it is getting you back in the mental wherever you need to be because like we, we are excited uh if, if you do decide to come back and like i said there is a lot of talks about do you know what's next for him outside of wrestling as if he may not be coming back due to yeah. these health issues so yeah. all we can do is it's just like yo prayers to you keith lee man like we like we live vicariously through you from a person we who do. has not been in the ring that long. I mean, like, yo, that's me. That's me. That's what I. Yeah, that's man. what I would have been if I'd have kept going right there. That's me. Just listen. I, I, I plan on shaving this beard, being Keith Lee for Halloween. So I listen. I'm telling you some okay. I'm finna. I'm out here. Okay, Keith Lee. For he is limitless. Less. So we hope. And that's so. Yeah. It's such a like 
I'm so impressed because even like the way he, the way he cuts promos and like I know we got more to the next topic though, but just the way he delivers promos, yes. he's so like well spoken. It's just mm-hmm. like the way he talks and the diction, and the way he paces himself. You don't hear that from everybody. It's so unique. Not, not like, I, you know, I'm I'm not being that guy, but um, I would not find it hard to believe if Roman Reigns and take a look at them Keith Lee tapes a little bit, cause um. Hey, I see a little bit in there. Like I like to me, I believe like like Romans a little bit found a perfect mixture of Keith Lee and Thanos. Yeah, that calm. I'll talk to you, but yeah. you can tell there is this this rage inside you. Like yo, I know how to control it now, and that's the scary part about Roman. Like when he when he comes out, he's yeah. Like, you know, like, oh yeah. shit. Like, nigga, you really can't whoop somebody's ass. But it's, it's the same so thing. Relaxed. Yeah, and it's just like, it, like, yo, if you ever, like, y'all ever get a chance, just watch Avengers again. Watch Thanos' like movements and then watch Roman. It is very much similar just because of that, that overlord type of sense of, I have all this power and I now know how to wield it without That's a losing very- my temper. That's a very good announcement, too, though, because I'm looking back at it because I, you know, I'm like, he's Marvel fan. I'm already thinking about the Thanos scenes right now. Like, even the way he moves, so he moves like it's like it's like it's slower, more methodical. Mm-hmm. Even like the way he talks, like he, like he he's slower in pace now. Yep. When you hear his words, like every word means something now. You know, like, and he doesn't, I remember before he would kind of ramble on before the mm-hmm. suffering stuck attached on that. All that's gone. Oh, yeah. Nah, Paul, Paul got that in the shape. Like, yo, say this this and then this and yeah. then sit there that's all you got to do because you notice even paul don't talk for him no more no so paul it's doesn't like, need to honestly he don't it's like yo like you know we got it with brock because you know brock's voice but it's like you've made it into the perfect combination of you two to where paul you don't even have to do the work really no more like that old camera just yeah. be there yeah you've molded what? it perfectly yeah what makes me really excited and it's like this is like the only thing it's one of the few things that has me excited about raw is that like i want bobby lashley to remain champion i want to see bobby and roman go at it at survivor series because they both have a similar layout they both have a, a, a great manager mouthpiece yep i want to see they're both heels i want to see what would happen i want here's to what, the clash again here's what's missing though bobby mvp if for some reason you watch this Tighten up. Tighten up. I see I see the road that's going, and it's a little loose. One, get rid of the women. Don't know why y'all bringing women out now. Please. Don't. Stop. Do not fall. Don't let them put you in that stereotype. Do not women let them do see, that to y'all. And it's it's so rough to, and I'm going to cut you off. To see no, those no, no, no. women, like, like how, no. like, in a, in a Thunderdome era, seeing them cheer for him, and oh, woo, yeah. Why? Why I get I get because again, and I'll say it to you like this, just because they just like yo, will you get it fat? You know, champion fast car evolution didn't do it. Evolution never brought women out to that ring. You saw commercials where they were with people, with women living that lavish life. They never brought women down to that ring with them. Do not let them do that to y'all. Do not let them paint a stereotype around y'all. Him being the dominant force that he is works. He don't yep. need no other gimmick to it. It works. Let yep. him be that almighty person and leave it at that. Let MVP be the mouthpiece. He does not need to have women trailing him. If anything, let him come, let, let MVP work on his mouthpiece so I can see him and Paul Heyman go at it in Survivor yep. Series as they building it. To where just the two of them are talking. While well, you got Bobby Lashley at the table and Rowan, and they both just like this silent, just yeah. While their managers talk for them, yeah. Come on. And Bobby and Bobby and Roman just never stop staring at each other. Just like never. constant gaze. Don't say a word. Like here come the sign, and they just like this. And then too, like it, like it, imagine it being like this way. This way it should have been. It should have been Roman. With with Jimmy and Jay, you know, they still have that that tension brewing too, though. But they're still as more or less a team with Bobby and the Hurt Business. Like they should have never broke that up. 
Didn't understand like, that. Wh- didn't understand that. Then I was like, um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Tag champs made sense. Uh, yeah. Cedric, OG, which is, you know, still who I feel is probably a part of one of the most underrated tag teams that they don't mention, which is yep. fucking him and uh, Chad. Like, come on. Like, yo, y'all can't World say, y'all can't. Tag team. You can't tell me that tag team wasn't fire. But they don't get, you know, they don't, you know, they didn't yeah. get, they didn't get speared off of holding the titles at WrestleMania, so you know, we don't, yes, we don't get to talk about them. But that yeah. tutelage, <laughs> it was like, yo, and, 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 I, and you know, and, and my whole thing is, you know what it is too. It's a, for me, it's more of a creative difference as you don't know what to do, and that's why you broke them up because then, yeah. what you don't want, what I'm now noticing. What you don't want is Nation of Domination Part Two. That's what you've been avoiding because New Day could have done it. But luckily, New Day figured out how to work their angle to where now they're the top the top thing to happen in WWE right now and consistently holding it. Hurt business was that next nation of domination. And you don't want that to happen because especially uh, now, because you can't talk about Black Lives Matter, can't really get into anything political right now because of everything that's going on with your brands and how they're tied into it. But you could have found a better angle if you would have brought in different writers to make that make sense. You breaking them up, him turning on them for what? And now them two fighting with one another on Raw? Yeah. Makes no sense. You, you took them away and did nothing with them. Like you can even still got the chance to bring them back now. It's speaking of which, Sue. Hey, was something wrong with Cedric's voice on that promo? Like the promo was good, Cedric though. But was his voice always like that? Yeah, because Cedric don't talk that much. That's another reason. Like, there's a lot of these <laughs> these cats that don't got good mic skills. That's why I was like, yo, I I get it on the standpoint of trying to push these folks, but it was just like. Even from their things, like the heart business, you had a mouthpiece. None of them need to talk. None of them need to talk. None of them. He spoke for all of them. Everybody. Even the way he calculated, like, the, like, first of all, hands down, probably one of the greatest, like, plans I've seen in the last maybe three or four years of how MVP got that title around Bobby. Yeah. I was I like, mean, so he, that's the real assassin from- shit. Bobby from the Lana storyline. You remember that? Yes. We ain't doing that no more. Fire. Oh. We ain't doing that no more. My God. The way they should have booked this, man. They really, if anything, like, like, man, bring in Ricochet. Have him be the world champion with you. Bro. I, I mean, uh, be, be oh, the, the, the U.S. champion. I thought that was going to happen. I thought that was next. As much as they beat him up, I thought they would go bring, beat him into submission to join them. And I thought that would have been fire, but we, so we, we're actually going to get into the last part of the podcast with that, with that, which is of course our fantasy booking um, and stuff like that. So we just really going to continue on how this should be going. So uh, the way that we're going to do this for today's fantasy booking is we're going to talk about the current state of raw and SmackDown leading into uh, their next pay-per-view, which is hell in a cell. So this fantasy booking is who we think should be champion as of right now. Uh, from world champion down all the way to tag um, to what feuds should be happening. At least at least top two feuds that should be happening on each one, on each brand outside of a championship run. And so we'll yeah. start with Raw. Um, like you said, let's start with, as we were talking about with Hurt Business, Ricochet, and all of this stuff, U.S. champion. Who would you like to see as U.S. champion right now? Are you cool with Sheamus being champ right now? You know, it's, and this is no knock against Sheamus at all. I never got Sheamus as a whole. Like, I can see, like, they've, you know, he's there. When I see him, I know he can put on a great match. But I never got into the Celtic Warrior type thing. I, it never, like, mm. pulled me in. And honestly, I just... I would prefer to I, I would prefer to see someone else as U.S. champion, honestly. And at this point, it would have it would have been great to have seen perhaps like a more edgier Ricochet as world mm-hmm. champ. I mean, as U.S. champion. But the way they booked him has been so bad. He ain't got no like, wrestling tights. I know. Yeah, no, no wrestling tights. He's you in jeans? Clothes. You in jeans, yeah. bro? And it's like 
Sheamus just had a match against Humberto Carrillo, and then Ricochet came out for the save. And I'm like, if I'm Sheamus, I'm like, oh, here are two guys I've already beaten on my own multiple times. Mm -hmm. What's the fear? I, you know what? I'll say I agree with you. Um, I believe yeah. if we got an edgier Ricochet, yeah. that would have worked. And you know what would have been real dope? Before they changed the title, this is how I saw it. You just let me know if, I, if I'm doing too much. I would have loved to see Ricochet be that one of two reasons. One, you now kind of go with like how, you know, like with the whole mixing. Don't know if Ricochet is mixed or anything like that, but you know, we have a lot that that is starting to be the come up of what's happening when it comes between people of, of, of melanin like ourselves. Mm -hmm. So already there's a realism to that with him as US champion. All of the trials and tribulations that we have to go through nowadays how would that not fit for you to have a black man as U.S. champion? And if you really want to piss people off, remember the old title, right? Before this yeah. new one. Imagine if he came out and the U.S. title was black and white. Black oh. and white stars and stripes. Woo. Welcome man. to welcome to our America. And he just sit it up like this. Oh and you God. couldn't tell Ricochet nothing. <laughs> and then he get the hurt business behind him. Oh, it would have been over. Oh, it would have been over. Perfect tie-in. You know, you know, Craig would have had a heart attack here. Oh, we can't bring up that kind of thing. Let me tell you something, okay? This has said the N-word on television, okay? You can yes. book this. Yes, you can Vince book this. This has said the N-word on, on tele in front of Booker T. Yes. Booker T does have no TV. Booker T had to put up with a lot. All right, that's why he deserves them two Hall of Fame rings, because he had to pay his dues and put up with a lot of stuff in that company. That's why yeah. I respect Booker T so much. He had put up with a lot, a lot. All those two, though, Booker T is a hothead. Let's not forget that. Like, let's, well, Booker T is a hothead. So, we got to remember Batista. Booker T from Houston. Ask Batista. <laughs> yeah, like, Booker T really is a hothead. So, it's just a lot of, you know, like, it is it is a weight of that. But, but like you said, it's, it's a lot of stuff that he had to go through that he didn't really need to go through because of ego due to ego and due to everything else. And it's just like, as as they try to let them know, like, yo, I'm down to pay my dues, but yo, you're not finna treat me like no, like no uh, B-I-T-C-H up in this thing. I'm from Houston, bro. We don't play that. I don't care and where you sitting at. I don't care who Vince like. That's not me and that's never gonna be me. I always heard that too, man. That's what, that's what helped get Booger elevated too, because there's no nonsense. And that's, mm -hmm. and in that locker room too, I heard, and I don't know for sure though, but they said that in them kind of wrestling locker rooms though, like if you don't have that kind of like assertion of yourself as mm -hmm. a man, like outside that ring, they're not gonna look at you like no star for the show. Mm -hmm. Cause, they, they, because they, there's they, so many people that, that'll test you with that and stuff like that, which is another reason why he got in with so much with, uh, with Stone Cold, because there was that respect there. Cause like Stone Cold had said, it was like, I worked with him because of his work prowess. Every time he's in that ring, he don't he don't come no less than 100%. He busts his butt just like me. That might be the Texan in us, but that was why he would always do because Book always showed up. No yeah. matter what, no matter what the match was, no matter if it was a job match, getting milk poured over you in a grocery store, that man sold that stuff. Yeah. Because he knew what he was trying to do. And when I tell you that goes down, it's one of the funniest moments in WWE history. That grocery store scene. Yeah. That people, that still is one of the highest rated moments. That's the war Bro, that was so great. But yeah, but that, but that that'd be my thing for I, so I think we both in the same thing as far as the US title is concerned. No, no disrespect to Seamus. I, I like Seamus. And you know what, you know what it is? Seamus need to be a hitman. Seamus would have a great angle as a hitman. And you know what really gave that away? When they stripped, I think, Roman of the title and gave it to uh, uh to Seamus. And, uh, and Triple H gave it to him. He became world heavyweight champ. I was like, this is random and out of nowhere. But it made sense. Because I was like, okay, screw job. Got it. That's what Seamus is good for. You are good as a hitman. Follow that angle. Even with the hat you wearing right now and stuff like that, yeah. hit the APA route. Get hired by somebody. Hired gun. A hired, hired gun. gun. Yeah. Really? Like you, the, the Celtic Warriors, that'll make the Celtic Warriors seem make more sense to me. Yeah. Like pay him up. He'll come out here and handle stuff for you. Mm -hmm. He can cost people titles. Let's this go. Is like, yeah. 
Let's fight. Let's fight, fellas. Let's fight. But right now, seeing him, like, I, I felt like that's something, like, the U.S. title would would, would have helped somebody like a Ricochet. Because Ricochet is somebody you guys can still market and make money off of. Like, just make get, him heal. It just gets better. and just continues yeah. to get better. And then it would beef up this angle of, you know, the big heavyweight. It would, it would build your division a little bit separately. So it's like, yo, yeah. move your super heavyweights into w into the world heavyweight picture let the u.s yeah. people for anybody that's lower than that that's the realm they're in yeah and anything yeah, else make up, a tag yeah build build up guys like angel garza to contend for u.s title and yeah. make it make, and make it mean you have all these guys make it mean something yeah you have guys on roster but when we we talked about it yesterday when we sat down and looked at you know who could, who could possibly contend and uh, we, we discussed a potential like fatal four-way or a six-way match for hell in itself for the title we couldn't think of people. We're like, okay, we, we were we were one guys. short. We were one short of who y'all currently got right now. And we the, the last person I think we've had to feel is AJ, but he a tag team champ right now. Yeah. So that would make no sense. Storyline. And he's busy losing to Jackson Riker for some reason. I'm like, why did oh. why why did y'all I don't get me wrong, I'm always a fan of AJ Styles and whatever he does. Why did y'all make them tag champs? He has no that, reason to be the tag team champion. Like you, you took. We got it. Bodyguard, yeah. utilize that. You're doing it for Apollo. That's like you taking Apollo and his chief, and y'all a tag team now. What? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Now for me, my fantasy booking because right now I feel the current champion that brand of disrespect is boring to me. I don't find him interesting. I would have loved to have seen AJ with the help of Omos take the NXT title. And run it like I am the reason why guys is like you even exist. Okay. Yo, bro. And he never and he never had to go through NXT. He went so, straight to main roster. So so and he always looked at those guys like you guys are beneath me. I didn't even have to come here. So can I paint the picture though? Can I paint the picture? Paint the picture. AJ comes in with Omas, obliterates Karen, then takes it. And then all of a sudden. Pele kick from AJ Styles. I'm finna beat all of y'all in the shape. Finn, yeah. beat in, in undisputed back into their own folds. Yeah. Ooh. Bullet Club reunion. Yo, come on, man. It's right there. Straight all of them. We taking over and then off of that, Survivor Series. Now we finna run it three straight ways. And so now, Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, Roman Reigns, champion versus champion versus champion. Do it, man. Because I, because the thing when it comes to Bullet Club, WWE has the interesting people that are in Bullet Club. That's what AJ, I'm just like. Oh, come Vince on, I gotta bring Vince. this in here. Y'all gotta bring some faction of Bullet Club into this. It's right there. It's so right there. But you know why they don't want to do that? Because it's gonna open a bridge they're not ready for. Cause that, cause like Triple H has always said, now I'm open to working with other uh, places and stuff. Now we're not, we're not in this whole like I don't want to do this. Like yo, it's a new world, so it's like I'm open if it makes sense. Yeah, and I think, and I mean, and I hope that would be great if it could somehow. Because like I said too, like the Bullet Club is, is they can make so much money off that they could, so and like they much. they tried so many different versions that did not work. They mm-hmm. didn't push Ballard Club. The OC, the club, I don't you know, because it's like the, the people they have right now in AW, like they're not the interesting parts of the Bullet Club. I don't consider the Bucks the Bullet Club. Those guys to me wandered into Bullet Club. You, you are you are the Sean you are the Shawn Michaels of the Bullet Club to Shawn Michaels of the NWO. Yeah. What are you doing? Like, like why do you have that shirt on? What yeah, are you like doing? how? Like, and it's just, like, again, like, the main people, the Nakamura's, the Styles, Finn, they're in WWE right now. Bro, so many factions. Nigga, the Strong Style faction? Yeah. Bruh, like, how does the King of Strong Style not have a kingdom? But, but, but that's SmackDown. That's SmackDown. We got, we got, we're going to stick with Raw because I know we got, we got, we got to kind of push through this one. So, definitely, like you said, the NXT title. So, we got, we got... Talking about AJ Styles, uh, tag team wise, man. To be honest with you, this for the sound hella weird. I would love for like one of the managers to come out and go. There are no tag team champions yet. Somebody got to earn it. 
y'all want these titles we're gonna have a whole tournament for it and then that final match introduce something new for the tag team division match wise yeah. that's because there's so many y'all haven't done there hasn't been why hasn't there been a triple threat ladder tag team match it's it a new video game yeah it's true it was in no mercy in i believe mercy. it was in no mercy why is there honest. why is there no why is there no money in the bank tag yeah. team match yeah there should be and to take it a step further you need to go ahead and unify the tag titles make make those the ones that can float make those ones that can float and we it's it doesn't it, it won't feel weird to us it would right now you don't have enough tag teams right now dog that would work so well that was the next thing yeah. so i'm glad we kind of combined those two so the uh especially with, with, with going into uh smackdown um that would make so much more sense and then there's so much more you can do and split both brands to where it doesn't cross like a mat like for, 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 for the most part why have we not had another elimination chamber for the tag team titles that was so great what happened it'll make, and it'll make the titles mean something because the tag titles don't mean anything the revival went on record of saying they didn't want to be the tag titles champions anymore because it didn't mean anything. It didn't. And all it was, and all it meant for them was just carrying around this belt through uh through the airport that they didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And I was, that was like, it. And, and that's a and that's sad because that's a championship belt. When you're like I again, I'm not a wrestler, I'm only a wrestling fan, but I imagined myself holding one of those belts as a kid. So I can only imagine the people who actually wrestle, you dream of holding these belts and it meaning something. And to get to a point where you don't even want it anymore because it just doesn't mean nothing. It's so disheartening, so oh, yeah. encouraging. And so for oh, yeah. me, unify the tag. You have so many great tag teams. But the thing about it is you don't book them well. The Viking, like, the, as the War Raiders, these guys tore up NXT. Otis, with heavy machinery, those guys tore up NXT. You guys released Tucker, and Otis is another tag team with Chad Gable that I haven't seen on SmackDown in probably a month. Then you took the street profits and let them lose to a tag team that ain't a tag team. Yeah. The dirty dogs, which for one, why are you taking two of your probably, and you know, no offense to them, but probably your best B division people and not doing nothing with them. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind another intercontinental run with Dolph. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing one with Bobby. And the thing, and like those two are guys too, who you, who, who should be the heel mid card champions to help elevate the new young baby face to overcome them. Cause they mm -hmm. can both work. They can both show the younger guys how to work exactly. and they can get them over. Yep. And, and, then, and also, yeah, no, what you about to and, say and, yeah, and I, and I, I'm, I'm going to cut y'all, but it's something that it, 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 it bugged me since the day Dolphin, uh, uh, Rue became a team. If you go back and watch, they're never officially called the Dirty Dogs. Nope. nope. They're only, they they call themselves that. Yeah. And when they, you see on commentary, it's Dolph Ziggler and Robert Rude, Bobby Rude. That's what they always you look, say. You look at their stuff in the back. It's their old stuff combined together. And they're only playing yeah. Dolph's music. Yeah. It's like, I think Dolph and them did this just to kind of make it make sense. Because, you know, Rude and Dolph Ziggler, they both understand creative. Mm -hmm. They both know how to make these things work. So they, they'll do whatever, and they'll try to make it work. And I think Dirty Dogs is them trying to make it work somehow as a tag oh, yeah. team. Even paper, though it paper, never... Paper champions. Paper champions. Yeah. You just, you are ta you're a tag team that's transitioning into whatever they want to do with the tag team championship next. But what should have happened, which, again, I don't know why it didn't make sense, Street Profits versus Rey Mysterio and Dominic. Yeah. That would have been great because either way, anyone lose, we're okay with it. Yes, and I mean, and like, and, and those instances too, because both tactics are so good, it would have been a great match. It would have to see the six one nine and like Montez Ford's frog splash Bro. is by bar none one of the best in the I, business today. I just ever it no, I, I screw that. The best in the, the best ever. The air he gets when you think oh he my. ain't gonna make it because he finna overshoot it. Not the, I don't think he gonna get enough. Bro, you too high. How are you finna come back? Like, bro, like when he go, like if it's this, this is the person 
and he's doing this. I'm like, bro, there's no way you're not finna go here. And for you to still hit it, I'm like, bro, you are ridiculous in that ring. Yeah. And while we're on fancy predictions, I much as I love the Street Profits, I want them to have good runs and all that. When the time comes to split them up, because the time will come, Montez Ford is going to be a star. Yes. Angelo, Angelo Dawkins is very good, too. He is. But Montez, I, but Montez Ford. You know, I got to keep it real. You know, I always gotta, I'm always going to keep it real. <laughs> come on. I'm always going to keep it real. Um, but Mont, Montez Ford, I feel he should either next year make him king of the ring, make it mean something, or make yep. him IC or U.S. champion and make it mean something. King of the ring. I would say King of the Ring. King of the Ring would be the best, probably best transition for him to go into singles. Then yeah. I can see what he can do. I can see how he is. I can see what he we already know what he's like on the mic, but we don't know what he's like by himself. Yeah. And everything. But we are on SmackDown though. So I I, I have a different fantasy of that going on. Um, but but before we do that, I just wanted to make it clear that um are we both content on Bobby Lashley as WWE champion right now? Like we didn't have no oh, yeah. different thing in that. Okay. Yeah. So we're yeah. gonna move over to SmackDown and talk about that. Um I know I know it's it, it's very, very, very slim chance, but just here's how I see. Uh-huh. <laughs> I would love to see the street profits. Like you said, I would love to see the, the solo thing in the next next either next year or the next two years. Yeah. What I would love to see now is them have the SmackDown titles and start a faction with Bianca Belair as the head of the faction. Mm-hmm. We've never seen a faction where the woman is running it. Just imagine that. that yeah. Them, her as a champion, them as the tag team champions. And honestly, that I could see that. I could see that too. Because, like, because again, because like Bianca is good on the mic too. Yeah. She's good on the mic too. So, like, she can speak for all of them. Yeah. I'll say Angelo Dawkins is the weakest on the mic. I wouldn't give it to him. I'll be mm-hmm. honest. Because I remember one time he literally forgot his lines mid promo on Raw. I was like, and tried to freestyle it. And it was like, Okay, but again, too, it's, it's it's that it's that I think too that split is either going could either make or break him because Angelo does have that 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 potential to do something dope. Like one, I wish yeah. he stopped wearing basketball shorts, uh, but you know that's just me and the and the headband. I just, it's, I just like okay, but it, it's a yeah. it's a it's a developing your character. Like right now, like the development of those two street profits character, it works together. But it's Montez's personality and his athleticism that propelled him as Montez Ford. Mm -hmm. And so Montez Ford can be worked into anything. And then you have the tag team partner of the Street Profits, which is Angelo Dawkins. But you don't really, there's, you don't have no highlight film. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like yeah. you see what we just named with everything, and we didn't. We don't even really know. I, do you know Angelo Dawkins' signature or finisher? Nope. Nope. Like he's literally like if this is heavy machinery, Angelo Dawkins is talking. Yeah. Unfortunately. Like, yeah. If they broke, if they broke them up right now, and I'm sad to say, it because I, I, we've seen it happen a million times. Mm-hmm. If they broke them up right now, I feel Montez would be fine. If anything, they probably pair with Bianca and try to make them go on some kind of run together. Oh, they're yeah. gonna put they're gonna put Montez in something, and Angelo end up on main event, and a whole new outfit, and then get released like Tucker. Yeah, pretty much. And there was no reason to break up heavy machinery at all. None. I didn't get. And then oh, over a chick that we all knew, like no, we we know this. And it was like, yeah, and it was like Otis had already made it clear. He pretty much kept hinting that he was gonna catch that in for tag team titles. Which I thought, I mean, I I wouldn't, but I mean, he did. But he was gonna make. I mean, it's like, and I, I saw that going something somewhere, and like everything from that is dropped. Mandy Rose dropped. Money in the Bank dropped. Heavy Machinery dropped. So what was all of it for? What was it all for? It, but it, it it was it was comedic. But then there's too, you know, you know, again, it's a behind the scenes things of like how you want to play ball and stuff like that. And so it's just like that and all these moving parts and stuff like that. Because again, too, it was like you move Mandy to Raw. Why? For what? And then she's in a scene where Sonya Deville is the authority now, and they're just 
together. Like, it's no big deal. Like, this wasn't your biggest blood feud a year ago. Bruh. And then, too, why did you make them a few? Why did you make, why did that happen? Yeah. If anything, outside of it, you know, just to bring back to the women's tag team, those two, Iconics. Yeah. And Sasha and Bailey, the only three deserving of carrying those titles. Who are actual and, tag teams. And and I'm sad about them not use, utilizing the Sky Pirates. Yeah, they were there. Bro. Right there. But you but you know what though? No, I, I understand that because can't everybody handle that? They can't handle EO by herself. Yeah. So yeah. that'd have been a lot. That'd have been a hard match to try to do, especially with a bunch of these new folks. It's hard to compete with the, with the, with the air pack, bro. That shit, yeah. yo. It, they they would have been ready for that. I, yeah. I understand Eos, that part. Yeah, because them, them two, Zane, man. bro, them two were ridiculous in the air. They wouldn't be ready for that, like especially how. Because the thing is, what most people don't know is them two held back. That's why Kyrie basically left. Like I can't yeah, do yeah. what I really want to do in here because yeah. everyone else aren't trained like that. And the only yeah. one that I do know that's trained like that, you've made us into a tag team, which again, didn't yeah. mind because one, they got to take care of one another too and didn't feel like they were alienated. So I thought that yeah. was very dope too because a lot of people didn't know that about Kyrie. Like it, it, wasn't, it wasn't great for a lot of them to be there just because they're taken in a place where, you know, this is new to all of them. This is Maryland, like, yo, like a lot of this stuff is new to them. So it's yeah. still trying to break that language barrier, currency, trying to get yourself places, trying to be able to deal with fans and stuff like that. So for them to find one another like that, it was dope. But it's yeah. uh, it's the uh, it's same thing with Strong Style and Sensuke. Not everybody in this industry built for that for the, in WWE to give them yeah. matches like that. Speaking but, uh, of Shinsuke, since, 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 since we are on, on SmackDown, I did want to get your take if I could. A little fancy booking on Shinsuke right, wearing that new crown with the new rock music. Where you see that going? Bruh, I need Shinsuke to have a strong style faction. I need the strong style kingdom. I need yeah. it. I need the strong style I need I need Shinsuke to come with that crown, have this new revitalization of like I can't be touched in the ring. I need I need him to have Seth Rollins confidence now. Ah. Because his move set is there for it. I need that type of confidence back. Like, yo, this is my ring. So he can have that whole run where he's straight smashing people. It's like, yo, I want the strongest out of everyone. Who do you put in the faction, though? Who I put in the faction? Alistair Black is one. Oh, but now here's yes. the thing. In this faction, it's not, it's equal. It's kind of like how, how they, you know how they tried to do the uh, the League of Foreigners with Seamus, Wade, and uh, uh, Barrett, and the rest of them? The uh, League of Nations. League of Nations, sorry. League of Nations. Yeah. Um, they were equal. It wasn't like the tag team champion and then like the intercut. They were all equals in one faction. That's what I need strong style to be. Somebody that's just like, yo, when you see it, it's like that, like, yo, you yeah. know they finna get at work. Alistair that's, would definitely be one of them as, as a good. strong style affiliate. Um, if we own SmackDown still, I would love for Cesaro to be a part of it, but I like I his solo that. stuff. Yeah. Because they all bring you, different. You, he was the he was the first he was the next person I thought of too. But and like you said too, like his current solo run, I like it. I yeah. don't want him. I don't want him back in any groups. Yeah. And he was already a tag team champion with Shinsuke already too. Like I don't want him. Right. I don't need. I don't need it. Um. Who I else mean, like, would I put in that faction? It's sad um, too because like if they would have built up Gable more because Gable can go like that too, but you yeah. wouldn't know it with the Shorty G gimmick. Yeah, you would have yeah, never. You yeah. would know. You gotta let him. That, that gotta die down. After five years, if he's still there, then he can have a run. That shorty yeah, G shit killed anything. Anything. It's, a lot, it's still a lot of stink on that for that one, man. Ugh. Uh, Ugh. Hmm. Uh, who else? Strong style king. King. Strong style kingdom. What's his name from NXT? He had that uh, that that fight pit match with uh with Riddle. What's his name? They had angle ref. Angle was a referee for it. Oh, uh, Tommaso? No, 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 no. It wasn't no, 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 no. Dang it, dang it. Tim <sighs> Timothy Thatcher. What's his name? Timothy Thatcher would be dope. Timothy Thatcher was his name. Because I like I don't think they're using him right now for anything. Nope. But you know who? Dang, but they ain't gonna do they ain't gonna do that with him. But you know what would have been dope as a call-up? Johnny Gargano. 
Johnny Gargano would be dope in the Strong Style Kingdom as the wrestling fat form of it. Oh, that'd be hard. Yeah, that'd be hard. Man, I, I, I'm so glad they. I'm so glad that like that like they canceled those callbacks they had at first with him and uh Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah, like they were in the middle of a blood feud and now they're a tag team because it's SmackDown. It's a different world here. What the. F- but like, yo, you know we watch, you know we watch NXT as well as SmackDown, right? Yeah, I know we do both. What you do? What you doing? What are you? This doing? is a DIY. DIY died a couple years back, and we didn't What's ask this? for any of that. We know that they don't like one another. None. None. Uh, dang, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think one more. Who would be one more? Because you at least want four. You at least want yeah. four. In case, in case four. you do want to put them in a tag team, and it's like, oh, okay. Or if you make that fourth person a girl. See now, now you, now you own to something. Wait a minute. <sighs> that fourth person could be a girl, bro. <sighs> hmm. If they had booked Shayna Baszler better, like if it, if it was like Queen of Space Baszler from NXT. Only, only the reason, why, only reason why I still want to see her do the four, four horsewomen run. That's the only reason I want to see her do the four horsewomen run, but the fourth person I would like to see, Natalia, the submission specialist, Natalia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heal Natalia though. Heal Natalia. Like edgy, edgy, yeah. edgy Natalia. Yeah, the one that like, that. Like nigga, like almost give me fabulous Moolah vibes. Like yo, if you really yeah. want to be here, get out this figure four. The That's real the stuff, like. the real like heart, dun- heart family dungeon wrestle. When, yeah, when she went on that run where she like, yo, yo, we finna teach you diva something. When she was with uh, with Beth Phoenix and they was doing that, yes, like that mean streak. I want that oh, mean yeah. streak. I want like, yo, y'all want to be in here, like, and it'd be great too for her to take out Carmelo like that. Like it's just like, yo, I'm gonna show y'all who the real queen of hearts is, and it's the black heart of queens. WWE, you, you, you need you need a go ahead and give us a check, bro. We just wrote the next six months of your program. I'm just right saying, now. You know, I'm just saying, put your boy on. Man. Put your boy like, on. We we'll write all this, man. We'll, we'll help y'all with this, bro. And I got one more. I got one more. And of course, we we skip in the intercontinental title. And I just and for, for me, I feel like this has should have been happening for him for the last two years. And for some reason, I don't know why y'all don't want to do this. And it may be because of this other wrestler, because he was recently on Stone Cold's podcast. If y'all don't let Miz break Chris Jericho record as the most intercontinental Listen. title reigns, Listen. What are y'all doing? Why not? Bruh, bruh, ain't nobody doing really nothing. Like, don't get me wrong, much respect to Apollo. You do not need the belt to build what you're building right now, though. No disrespect to him. Keep building it. You just don't need the belt yet. That was always my thing. I don't think you need the belt. And I also don't think Big E needs to win the belt just yet until you develop him as a singles person. Like, stop wearing New Day leotards and you're a solo person. And that's not to you, Big E. That's to whoever your creatives are. If y'all gonna split them, split them. Because it's all because, I guess, because if if it's over, it's over. You're right. Don't right. tell me that, or if, if they're if they're split and it's just you're both representing, say that, and then let yeah. him come out to the new day music. Say that, but don't so sit that. here and try to go like they're over here now, you're over here, and you're not really utilizing the way because you're doing the same thing you did when you gave it to him the first time. You gave it yeah. to him too early when he was that that hitman bodyguard dude, and you didn't let him develop what he needed. Yeah, he had he had an equal title run at Ezekiel Jackson. At that exactly, point. it was like very forgettable. You don't even remember it, and no. he's, you don't remember it. No, and but so now, I, I said, "Oh yeah, go ahead, my bad." No, 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 no. So, so, so you, I'm sorry, you talk. Oh no, 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 no. I was just agreeing with you. I just, I, I, I feel that like he, like you say, he doesn't need it. Apollo don't need it. You put it on Miz because at this point, like he needs that record. He could make, he could make an entire run with bragging about the record. Bro, I mean, he's already like. And again, my my, uh, it's always a debatable opinion. That man had the top three matches in WrestleMania with him and Bad Bunny. They stole the show. They did. They did. They, they stole did. all of it. They that. did. 
it, yeah. it it took two black women starring in a championship to top that. <laughs> it took two dudes who we thought would never wrestle again go up against not to diminish his stuff, but just how we're breaking it down. The Rock's cousin. Yes. And uh, that was the only reason why it beat y'all out. And still is debatable because my, the, the fact you cut a Canadian destroyer outside the ring. Yes. Like, like bad buddy, and you yo, killed it. Yo, you that's He it. had the best WrestleMania, the best wrestling match from a non wrestler, in my opinion, period, Ever. in WWE. Ever. Like he, he beat Stephen Amell. He beat all the other people. He beat Mr. T. John all Stewart. Stuff. The fridge, John. everybody. And if I have to say though, this no, is just me in my opinion. Yeah. That's bar. If you're not doing that as a celebrity, don't step in the ring. I agree. Don't be Logan Paul. That was trash. Yeah. That was, was that was hot garbage truck juice in the middle of the of a Detroit summer. Yeah. It that was, was, it was trash. It was him just promoting his brand. You could tell Bad Bunny respects the business. He respects wrestling. He enjoys it. He came out with doing that. When he did, he doing this. That I, it got over with me. I yeah. I remember seeing it when he did it because you could tell he really meant it. He got in the ring. I know English isn't his uh first. It's not his strongest. Not mm. not his no like strongest though. But for me, he got on the mic. He he got his points across. He made it work. He let his actions do the talking. He sold it like he helped promote the brand on other on other platforms. He carried the twenty four seven title to SNL. He made it. I mean, it's it's I know, it's it's a joke title, but he still carried it with you know as much respect as you can for a joke title, and his yeah. match with against Miz was very good. He was doing her Piranhas, it did a Canadian destroyer, like you said. As some wrestlers can't do that. No, what, somebody what like bro, some wrestlers can't do some of the moves he did, and a lot of celebrities wouldn't have went as long as he did. But it's just like yo, if you're gonna step in that ring and do a match, that's what it needs to be. No, That's no, awesome. no less than that. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not asking fucking Soldier Boy to do a Canadian destroyer outside of the ring on nobody. I'm not asking that. Ooh, man. But this if you're gonna step in that ring, give that respect. I need that. Like I need you to be able to get the next day, have Randy Orton tell you that's a WWE superstar, and I don't want to hear nothing else past it. Yep. That dude earned it. And it's like, because, yo, if you yeah. yeah, you don't do that. That's the same thing like Randy Orton decides I'm finna drop an album and I want to be number one on billboards. Huh? Uh huh? Wait, what? Like for me, like you said, if you if you step in somebody's into a whole new world, you come in there respectfully, though. Like I'll never forget Jeremy Pivens going up there and saying Summerfest. I'll never forget that. Him just not knowing the product whatsoever, not knowing what's going on, not knowing who is who, mm -hmm. and the fact that Cena had to feed him lines to get him through this segment is embarrassing. It is. It's, it's an embarrassment. And then too, if it, even even someone to the point of if you don't know it, like a Kim Kardashian, we know she don't know wrestling like that. But what we do know is Kim know how to host. Yeah. There's no denying that. Kim knows how to host, and that's what Kim did. Yeah. Was it the greatest thing? Was it a memorable? No. But for some, but we knew what it was about. We yeah. knew what y'all were trying to bring in, and y'all didn't make her do anything that rubbed us the wrong way. And she understood yeah. that too. Let me come in. Talk, hello, welcome to WrestleMania. Leave. That's yeah. it. That's it. I was That's there. It. That was the spectacle. I don't need to be in the ring. I yeah. don't need to interact with the superstars like that because this isn't my this isn't my field. I get yeah. that. I'm just happy to, she, to incorporate. Where she was was perfectly fine because WrestleMania is a showcase of superstars as well, celebrities yeah. and all that. So it fit. It fit. It fit. It fit, yeah. but you but for this whole like Logan Paul thing, and it's like then you fight, and that's my thing. I didn't understand. You're a fighter, and you just sitting in here, just like, oh, let's get a camera in with his facial reactions. I'm like, I don't, I don't care enough about you in the realm that you are in. Yeah, and then you now step into one that I beloved, and you do nothing. Crap. And then you're involved in a segment with two of the best wrestlers on their roster, and you still suck. To the point where even Kevin Owens stunning you, which we all saw coming, was like, I don't care. I don't, I don't, I didn't, I didn't need three weeks of buildup for this. Have we seen Kevin since that feud? 
Yeah, yeah, he uh, he uh, wrestled on SmackDown. Uh, they have they they I, I'm most likely gonna, they're going to do a Fatal Four Way. He was in that Fatal Four Way. That's right. That's that, right. And that's yeah, mostly I'm likely going to be what the t- the match running in Hell in the Cell is going to be: Big E, Sami Zayn, uh, Kevin Owens, and uh, Apollo Cruz oh, for the title and stuff. Okay. Might be in Hell in the Cell. Might be in Hell yep. in the Cell. Or if I you you know how crazy they get some. You know, these your people. Y'all got any wild ass cages? Y'all go have one. <laughs> and Niger- we're going to have a Nigerian pole stick match at Hell in a Cell. When the boy said, we're going to have a Nigerian drum match, I was like, what the hell is a Nigerian drum match? We were there when that happened. What? I was like, um, why are these drums here? <laughs> it's just like they literally announced it without knowing exactly what the match would be. Or here's a, here's a very easy idea. How just about a regular match between the two of them for the Intercontinental title? <gasps> yes. You mean that might actually work? And we let Wale do the entrance too? <gasps> yeah. Do you think that could work. actually? No, we got we got we got to put a whole bunch of bells and whistles and, and you know and all that kind of stereotypical stuff on there for it to work. So let's do a, what do what do black people drums drums I just watched yeah. drum line with Nick Cannon so we gotta gotta incorporate hey, that hey call Flow Rider is Flow Rider available this year no Flow Rider is not available unfortunately uh we will have to go with another dude Bad Bunny but we already got him set up already so we need to you know what I'm sure Nigerians got drums let's slap Nigerian on the front this is Nigerian drum match now John Cena running and cut a rap. Have them rap during the sun. They, they like when he raps. Have they like rap. when he raps. They like when he raps. Matter of fact, we're going to have a, a rap battle between Apollo Crews and Big E next week on SmackDown. And John Cena's going to be the referee. That sounds about right. And the fact that, that he had to say that when I'm completely just talking out the left ass cheek, mm-hmm. maybe she'll let y'all know something. But uh, we, we are getting ready to kind of bring kayfabe to a close. So I just want to see two fantasy matches you want to see at Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell is the next pay-per-view coming up. Uh, so far, it is uh, Rhea Ripley versus uh, Charlotte Flair. Okay. But two matches. Just two matches you would love to see with everything currently going on. What would you like to see at Hell in a Cell? And I know, I know this sounds so crazy. And because neither one of them are being used right now. But for me, I wanted to see a conclusion to it just because I felt it should have been one. But because of like, you know, uh, outside stalker in real life, it got halted. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to have really seen a real blood feud boil over between Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. Yes. I would have loved to have seen it because Sonya Deville's promo skills would have sold it because she's her promo. So, oh. so underrated. She in her bag so right now, bro. She in her bag right now, bro. Her bag, okay? No. Okay, I wanted to see that because I wanted that to elevate Sonya Deville to be the one challenging Rhea Ripley or Charlotte. I don't want to see her as an authority figure. I want to see Sonya Deville in the ring fighting for the championship because she belongs in there. Because yeah. she can work and she can go on the mic. That's one match. The other match, let's say... Uh... Let's say SmackDown. I would have loved to see. It's not gonna happen. I thought it was gonna happen uh, before. They kept Roman and Biggie away from each other for a reason. Yeah. Like they they kept so they. It's been almost a year now, and they have mm-hmm. not made any contact whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to have seen that. Like, hey, you've been ducking and dodging me. I know you have. And remember, you've been ducking Dodge me since you were in the shield. And I was in the big, and Biggie was giving him that work when they was in the shield, yeah. <laughs> giving you that work. Giving you that work. The they were both the powerhouses of the group. They're both mm-hmm. the power. Yep. And he was like, "You didn't want to see me back then, and you don't want to see me now. Let's go. Yep. I want so probably those two. Okay. Okay. Uh, I definitely say okay. I definitely uh co-sign that those are great uh i'm I'm gonna yeah. definitely stick with on the smackdown side first i'm gonna also go with biggie but a little bit different i need to see biggie in another feud before that i need to see him in something bigger that puts that over so because to be honest with you for biggie i need you to kind of lower down 
the comedy. Biggie, yeah, Biggie like is it. a nerd. Biggie is Biggie is, is basically like myself. I yeah. get it. I need some of that shaving off. I need you to be in a feud with somebody that's going to push you here. Because physically, you Seth Rollins feud? I a Seth Rollins feud would be so good for Big E right now. Just, and, and and Seth can move it just like that. Like, bro, you're there. There's just that this, this is what's holding you back. Yeah. That glass ceiling that you just can't break through. Through all the pancake throwing, video games, up, up, down, all of this stuff. There's something, that one little thing you haven't done to where they consider you to be in the main event. And I'm going to help you do it. You yeah. just have to believe in yeah. me. Bruh, you bruh. And there yo, it is. From there all, it is. Let him let him conclude it at SummerSlam and let Big E go over. Bruh. Then that's next. Roman, Roman next. In a promo. Right. That's it. Because then now you've already, because if you think about it, you've now beaten two members of the Shield. The last one left is him. It's like Roman. Stop ducking and dodging me. You really want competition? Come at me. WWE, call us. We just wrote the whole. If I see it, if I see it happen, if I see it happen, you know where it came from. If we, you hear it from my lawyers, okay? I'm telling you. You hear it from Marquise Bryant if, if I see this on television. No bull, no cap. I'm telling because you. Because for real, like that's. That's it. They have everything. That's it, right there. No, and then again, no sweat off of Seth because they're gonna have phenomenal matches. No sweat off of his back to keep going. And then for him, you now it's now them two. They it, it's a, a, a what it is the unmovable for an unmovable object versus an a, a unstoppable force. Yeah. Now and, like you got, and then too with Roman at the high thing of running everything, perfect underdog thing. Everybody loves Big E in the locker room. Now the locker yeah. room's behind you. We need Big E to win. We need yeah. Big E to take this title off of him because of what and he's doing for everybody. And then with Seth losing, like it's not gonna hurt Seth at all to lose. At all. He's, he's so established now, it wouldn't hurt him not one bit. Not at all. Because at not any time, there's no way I wouldn't believe Seth Rollins can go, I want a belt now. And I'm gonna yeah. go for and, it. Hell, hell, Seth could pop up on NXT just like AJ. Hey, this was mine first. Right. You really think you're king of NXT? Prove it. I've done it before. I've walked here as champion and, and fought the top guy, and I have no problem doing it again. We, we just, in one episode of Kayfabe. One, one episode. First episode. First episode. Book all three shows for the next six months. Come on, man. And you're only going to see this <laughs> and so much more on kayfabe as i said you know, myself and chen do are going to be helming this thing but we will be bringing in other wrestling enthusiasts like i said cleo thomas to clayton thomas as well to other folks who are just real wrestling enthusiasts we're not just going to be talking about current up-to-date stuff we will be getting into all type of topics from the most underrated wrestlers our wrestling mount rushmore to just so many things screw jobs days in history you know the whole thing my stuff's so excited the camera just keep turning off you already know what it is if you you know me you know what's going on but yes make sure that y'all check out this new wrestling podcast kayfabe we are going to be trying we've been bringing to you consistently each week it's just something we love to talk about which is wrestling what's going on so i definitely want to thank Tina do for uh joining me on this man this is something i've really wanted to do so i'm definitely glad that we are letting this happen and, and again this is just from or this is organic for people that don't know yep. literally we talked about this and we called each other literally yesterday and was like, so what up with this? And we were like, yo, we can we can shoot on this day. Bet. And we literally did it the next day. Boom. So there you go. No have. joke. No joke at all. Yeah. So make sure that you uh follow our socials to stay up to date with everything that's going on. You may see it on our profile. Also, maybe coming to all depth. You never know. But what you will know is this is wrestling for us by us. Uh, so I have been your host, Will Farrow. 